All right, if everyone could start coming in and finding a seat, um, remember that when you come into this room and you are considered to be on the convention floor, you will need to be wearing your mask. The only reason I don't have one on is because I'm going to be talking. So we will get started very shortly. So please come in, find your seats. You should have a name tag and a mask. Thank you. <clears throat> Hey, Scott. Scott. Yes. Can you just look around? Uh, uh, well, I know I'm walking out the hall. So. I know. Here, yeah. I hear them too. I just asked for me. We're going to give them five minutes. Uh, okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, I hear more people out there. The good thing is that we have a lot. There are breaks. It is. I can be loud. Yeah. So it's sound and get ready. I did. Everyone, come in and listen to me. I'm interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and so humble. <laughs> and so not. <laughs> and I'm caffeinated. That's why you're so humble. <laughs> I'm not as caffeinated as I need to be. So you're already back here. That's I am back here. I'm going to the table. That's good. And when I. Right. I need to be out by 9.55. Just kidding. Are the Zoom people out there, I guess, listening to some sort of music? And the YouTubers? We'll sing to them. We could. We could. We could sing an exercise song. We could. Put your left foot in and take your right foot out. Oh, see, you're much better than me. I was thinking of that old 70s commercial exercise. Your choppers really choo, choo, choo. Oh, my God, that was so old. <laughs> so <all> my age. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Oh my goodness, that was my childhood. <laughs> oh, it's almost quiet. <laughs> Are there chairs back there by that table? Right there's, there? chair, there's a chair right by me. Okay, that I've got my stuff on. And then there's chairs, chairs all the way. There's chairs all the way. Right yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll just sit in this one next to me over here then. Okay. I hear more people coming in. That's all right. They'll get going when we get started. That's right. They will. Okay, everyone. We have about one more minute. Well, it sounds like there's quite a few folks. Come up close so we can see you. <laughs> and call on you for answers to questions. That's right. <clears throat> All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good morning. 
Oh, that was such a pathetic Sucks. effort. That was bad. I'm going to try that again. Good morning. Oh, that's better. And welcome to, oh, I can take this off ah, air. Um, welcome to all of you out there listening and watching on our Zoom platform. Thank you for being with us. Hi, KSB. See, you're getting out of class. This is going to be so much more fun. To you all on YouTube, hey, out there in YouTube land. I always wanted to be on YouTube. Now I am. So here we are and welcome. Welcome to our 10th annual TAD Symposium. Symposium. TAD Technology Assistance Division of the National Federation of the Blind. This is the kickoff event to our 75th. NFB convention. Yeah, that deserves a cheer. Yeah, 75 years. We have been going strong, changing what it means to be blind, enhancing the life of individuals who are blind and visually impaired. And to enhance our lives, we do lots of things, don't we? We're here, right? One of the other things we do or we should do is Exercise, yay for exercise. Now I have told everyone that I am highly allergic. If you follow me on Facebook, you all know. Um, but this morning, maybe maybe I can have an allergy shot because with us, we have Mr. Dave Wilkinson. Now Dave is an extraordinary human being because he does things like Ironman races. He just did a race on Sunday. Dave is blind, uses accessible equipment, and exercise is such a hot topic since the pandemic and everyone trying to keep up with that. So we are going to hear this morning from Dave Wilkinson, and he is going to talk to us about accessible exercise. So let's give him a happy round of morning applause. Yay! Yay. Here's the flashlights if you want to turn off the mic in between and wipe it down. Like right oh, thank you. No, underneath. Oh, no. See Thank that? you. Oh, wait. Let me wipe it down. Oh, she told me to turn it off first. Not really. All right. It's clean. All righty. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, come on. You've all been at breakfast. You were caffeinated. All right. That'll, ha that'll have to do. Uh, for those who don't know me, and uh, you may be better off that way. Uh, my name is Dave Wilkinson. I've been in Louisville for a number of years now, and uh, I have no attention span. And as a result, I've changed jobs a number of times. I'm currently a, and hope to be, I think I found my, uh, what is it, your forever home? Uh, uh, as a digital accessibility analyst for Hilton Hotels, if you ever use the Hilton Honors app, that's where I live every day, all day, uh, trying to make things better. So you'll have my contact information. If you run into issues with the Hilton Honors app, you've got someone you can contact and I will do what I can to get it fixed. Uh, Hilton has been fantastic uh, to me as an employer. And part of the way, and the way that I ended up at Hilton, I was telling Joe this story earlier, relates right back into exercise. I traveled for years and years uh, for various companies, Humanware, Freedom Scientific, Hims. I worked for all of them. Um, and I insisted on staying at Hilton's over the years. And the reason I insisted on staying at Hilton's over the years is that they had accessible, moderately accessible treadmills. They had treadmills that had buttons and I knew how to make it start, stop. I could get the incline and I could do the speed. And I'm, I've been doing marathons and other such things since I did my first marathon when I turned 40. Uh, and running and exercise was how I unwound at the end of the day. And I wanted to skip the front desk and not have to deal with human beings. And uh, so I was really excited about the accessible treadmills at Hilton. And at a conference that, that I was at, a person from Hilton, the director of digital accessibility, now my supervisor, uh, came up to me and introduced herself. And you know how you have those sort of spot moments where you say things and later on, you're not sure if it was a good idea or not. And I'm like, I love your treadmills. And, uh, and there was this pause and she's like, why? And <laughs> I'm like, oh, they have buttons and I don't have to talk to human beings. And I'm in a job where I have to talk to human beings. So that's perfect. I don't want to talk to people. And uh, she's like, I want to keep in touch with you. At which point I started to question her, her, you know, judgment, but what do I care? And uh, so 
I did. And I kept in touch. And at, at a certain point, we had conversations back and forth. And she's like, I want to hire you for my accessibility team. And I'm like, I know nothing about digital accessibility. She's like, we'll show you. And you've stayed at more Hilton's than the rest of my staff combined ever. We want you on our team. And so that's how I ended up at Hilton Digital Accessibility was because of buttons on a treadmill. Uh, and the lesson for that, if you're out there at KSB, is networking happens whether you realize it or not. Uh, you are always networking. And so always think about how you're presenting yourself, although I wasn't thinking about that. And it worked out great. So maybe you don't think about how you present yourself. Do as I say, not as I do. Uh, I have a, a few things that we're going to try to do this morning. Uh, as a lot of you all know, I used to sell various equipment and I'm still selling things, except today we're selling something much more important than equipment. We're selling me uh, and we're selling what I'm up to next and how you can help with that uh, because nothing is for free. So I have things that I want from you this morning. Uh, I just finished an Ironman triathlon this past Sunday. For those of you who aren't familiar with what an Ironman triathlon is, you're probably, again, better off. It is a 2.4-mile swim, a 112-mile bike ride, and then you finish it off with a marathon, which is 26.2 miles. And then at the end of it, ironically, all you want to do is sit down and rest and sleep, and it's the last thing you can do because your body is so keyed up. I didn't sleep for probably any quality sleep for about 72 hours. Um, I mean, you get a little bit of sleep here and there and you're like, oh, I'm so tired. Oh, that hurt. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, God, that hurt again. Uh, <laughs> and, um, I wanted to introduce my guide this morning, but he is on a plane coming back from Colorado. Uh, as soon as he landed from Sacramento on late Monday night, Tuesday morning, he reboarded a plane to Denver uh, and he's doing his thing out there with some sort of work thing. Uh, but I, I bring up the Iron Man thing for a couple of reasons. One, because it's my final one, because um, it really hurt. Um, and uh, two, because it, I, I don't want you to leave here this morning. I, I'm, I, I want to be as transparent as possible. And I don't want you to leave here this morning thinking, oh, I got to go out and do an Ironman because Dave did one um, or three. Um, and I'm wearing an Ironman finisher t-shirt because the race didn't really go as well as I wanted it to. And so I'm trying to become comfortable with this race and I'm choosing to accept it for what it is. And so I'm wearing my finisher t-shirt. Um, but uh, think when I, when I was in my twenties, when I was in college, I told someone earlier out there, I was, I was busy drinking and smoking and doing other things that weren't particularly good. And uh, for me, and I wasn't exercising, or at least if I was, it was only to run out and find more stuff to drink and smoke. Um, but uh, I got into uh, exercise. Uh, I had a job running college residence halls and, uh, and, and I worked at American University in Washington, DC. And for reasons that defy all logic, when I started working there, there was a fitness center in the basement of my building. And since it was in my building, I had to run the thing and I could never keep it staffed, which meant that I ended up having to, uh, work in this stupid fitness center that I didn't like because it involved sweat. And I figured if I was going to work there, if I was going to stay down there, I may as well start exercising. And at a reception uh, for one of the national consumer conferences, I met somebody who was a member of Ski for Light. Is anybody familiar with Ski for Light? They're a fantastic group. They match up skiers with bl uh, blind skiers with guides uh, for cross-country skiing. I can't recommend skiing highly enough. Uh, and they'll start with beginner or novice skiers and, the, and the, they'll, they'll go from there. Uh, I went to the reception because there was beer. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then I decided on the spot, which is how I do a lot of things. Oh, I could ski. Uh, and so at that point, I signed up for the next Ski for Light event. I, had, I was in terrible shape. I had a fitness center in the basement of my residence hall that I was running for a college. And so I started to, to, to work out and uh, I started to do a lot of mental imagery of what it was going to feel like to be on the snow and uh, how my body was going to feel free. And, and, you know, I did, a, I'm a big believer in, in, in imagery and having visual, uh, visual images in your head that are appealing and, 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 and positive and good for you. And I think that's one of the biggest keys to exercise uh, because exercise on a lot, a lot of times sucks. 
Um, there's no, there's no avoiding that you do it for the endorphins and you do it for the feeling almost afterward. And for the feeling that you, and, and, and then once you get hooked, you do it because you don't want the feeling of not doing it. Um, and I, I live off of visual imagery when I'm training for Ironmans. I, I think about the finish line, what it's going to feel like. I think about what it's going to feel like to get out of that, the, the water and get onto the bike because I hate swimming. Um, I don't really hate swimming. I'm just deathly afraid of it. Um, <laughs> and, and, and I, I, I mean, I was, I was telling Sandra earlier, it, and I, I really didn't know how to swim until I uh, decided I was going to do triathlons and sw swimming really does scare me. And when you're doing uh, swimming as a, as a blind person in a triathlon, you're tethered to your guide at the waist and uh, it's an open water and it just terrifies me. And uh, I take Xanax. Uh, it's, it's called an accessibility accommodation. Um, and, uh, I make no bones about the fact that that's how I survive swimming. Um, and, and so I envision what it's going to feel like to get out of the water and to get on the bike and to finish the bike and to think there's only a few more hours to go with this. And it's, you know, although it's 26.2 miles, um, now, before we get into some of the accessible exercise parts of things and how I have my system set up and my system is. And I will be the first to admit that I am very rigid as far as what I do and don't know about accessible equipment with exercise, because I have requirements that I need to meet to, in order to get data to my coach. And uh, once I have a system that works, I absolutely will not change it uh, during a training cycle because it might crash the whole thing. Um, so one of the things that I'm hoping we can do later on is open it up and find out what other people have done. But before that, it's time for a little bit of advertising. Is that okay? Since we're not doing any more Ironman competitions, Dave has another bad idea. And here's Dave's bad idea. And my guide has agreed to it. Um, we are training for the 2024 Race Across America, which is a 3,3100 mile. I've seen both listed. They both seem really long. Uh, bike race from coast to coast. Um, you get 12 days to finish it. Uh, so you end up riding, you know, four, 400 miles a day somewhere in there. Um, again, not the smartest thing I've ever come up with. Um, 300 miles, somewhere in there. I don't know. It's a lot. Um, here's what I need from you. I can't afford this. And so I'm trying to get corporate sponsors. In order to get corporate sponsors, I want to have numbers so that I can show that I've got people that are interested in me. My website is in a very stripped down phase at the moment. It'll launch in January, but I do have an email form where you can sign up to follow Dave at speedyturtle.net um, and keep, in, keep up with what we're doing. So you can go to my, what will soon be website, speedyturtle.net. I have business cards. I'll hand them out to you. Um, and we will sign, and, and you can sign up for an uh, e updated emails on how we're doing how me and my guide are doing with training. We're gonna have some fabulous things like live Facebook events of Dave riding nowhere in his basement. Um, we're gonna we're gonna start him after about 16 hours of that where Dave will look really good. Um, <laughs> it, so it, it should be, and if anybody does want a business card, I do have them here. If we have anyone who wants to hand these out, we have, uh, we have cycling cards without braille and then we have uh, uh, real cards that have braille. Um, and, but I'm, um, I'm more than happy to, hit, to, to pass these out. It has my email address, Dave at speedyturtle.net. Um, the reason it is speedy turtle, anybody want to guess why it's speedy turtle? For a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> it's about what you feel like as you're going later. You're like, well, if I was a turtle, this would be great. The other thing I like about speedy turtle is the turtle won the race. The hair took off too strong. And, uh, so I'm not really very fast. And, uh, so, but you know, those people that are speedy, I end up leaving in the dust, um, cause they get tired later and the turtle just plods on by what I use for accessible exercise equipment. Um, I have a number of things that I use and there are a number of things. And, and, and I guess to get started, there are a number of things that I don't use and we'll get started with some of them first because they are some of the most obvious things out there. You have a lot of equipment that is now compatible with Apple fitness plus. So if you have an Apple watch or if you have an iPhone, you can get uh, treadmills or exercise gear, bikes, rowing machines that are compatible with, with Apple Fitness Plus. I was Googling the other day and I saw a treadmill that was about 600 bucks, which for a treadmill isn't bad. Um, that it's 
it's not what my treadmill cost. Um, but then again, my treadmill goes through hell. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, but it, it's so it's not you don't have to have super expensive uh, exercise equipment to do this. There there are there's a there are rowing machines uh, that you can still get like Concept Two rowing machines, and Concept Two is a company that has had. Um, an accessible app for years and years uh, that we could use. You can also use your Apple Watch, again, to keep track of things like rowing. You can get a Fitbit for, what are Fitbits now? 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Uh, the Fitbit app is accessible. So if you want to keep track of your, your steps per day to see if, you know, everyone always talks about 10,000 steps. Don't start with 10,000 steps, start with 2,000 steps. Um, you can do that at an everyday, no, don't go to 700. Um, I think that's what you said. Um, start with a thousand. Um, and, and honestly, what you can do if you don't want to even think with steps, what I encourage people to do if you're really not in very good shape is even when you're just doing your toast in the morning, stretch for a couple of minutes. Uh, stand flat on your feet and go up on your toes. And if you need to hold onto the counter to do that, that's okay. That stretches your, that stretches your shins, that stretches whatever those muscles are that are in there. Um, I'm not a doctor. Um, but, uh, but you know, you, you can do toe touches or you can do stretches, uh, just while you're waiting for the morning toast. There's a fabulous series that a person did years ago, uh, that was called blind alive. Is anyone familiar with the blind alive series? I happen to still have all of the exercise recordings and they just take you through some basic exercises, how to exercise with a stretch ball, uh, stretching, toe touches, all that kind of stuff. If you want the set of exercises, email me at dave at dot net. There you go. That was supposed to be much more energetic, but I'll take it. Um, let's try that again. Dave at very good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so there, there, you can also get complete courses on yoga that are physically that that are described uh down to uh phenomenal detail on 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 how to do different yoga poses um if you're someone like me who is, needs to stretch uh that can be a godsend one of the things that i hate to do is go to like a, a a gym and go into a yoga class and they'll be like do the lotus tortoise blah 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 position i'm like i don't know what that is and it sounds awful um <laughs> and I'm sweaty and gross. Could you come over and touch me anyway? Um, and, <laughs> and so this will let you learn a lot of these positions ahead of time. I think the blind yoga courses are still available. I have them. I will find out if they're still available. If they're still available, I won't just give them to you. I'll give you the information on how to, how to, how to get them so that somebody who put these together can actually make money off of them. Um, cause they were a fellow bl uh, blind person. Uh, if you really want to get spendy with your exercise equipment, uh, everybody knows that Peloton devices are totally are, are accessible, right? Does everybody know that? Yes, I'm so happy someone said no, because that means I know more than you do. And that always makes me happy. Um, <laughs> Peloton devices are Android based. And that means that they have Android's accessibility features, which means that they have talkback, which means that you can completely run any feature of your Peloton device by swiping left or swiping right and double tapping. Uh, you can join classes, uh, you can start the device, you can stop the device, you can do, you know, it, 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 any of the controls that it has are available through talkback. Uh, it also uses uh, Android's magnification features if, if you're a semi cycling. Um, is that a real term? Uh, probably not. Um, it is now on the semi cycling. I like that. Um, it just rolls off the tongue. But uh, so you, uh, they are completely, they, they are totally accessible. Uh, you can also do things like if you own an Apple Watch, uh, Apple Watch has a very good swim uh, program. If you're thinking, I don't want to run or bike. I want something that's really easy on my knees. We have a fantastic swimming uh, aquatic center here in Louisville uh, called Mary T Aquatic Center. All the lanes are roped off. Uh, so you're not going to swim into someone else's lane. They are used to blind people swimming there because they've had this blind dude who shows up several times a week for the last four years. Um, and uh, they've gotten very used to it. And uh, 
and then, you know, and when someone tries to jump in my lane, I'm like, yeah, you can swim my lane and I'll, I might kill you, but it's, uh, it's not my fault. Jump on in. And then they usually stroll off and bother someone else. Um, but your, your Apple Watch can keep, does a fantastic job in going all the way back to anything except for the Series 1 Apple Watches are waterproof. Uh, I promise they really are. Um, I've dunked mine in the water more times than I can count. Uh, and they will keep track of your laps, your strokes for swimming. You can pause them, you can restart them. Uh, and, and they will, they will give you data if, if, if data is important to you for swimming. Um, Android or, or Android Google just released, uh, an, an Android based, uh, watch that I have not played with. It does have talk back built into it. It should do a lot of the same things. Uh, I am committed to Apple at this point because I've spent a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> and so that's kind of where we are. Um, some other things that you can do, you do have treadmills that are available that are Bluetooth compatible, that are not necessarily uh, Apple Fitness Plus compatible. There is a free app called Run Fit that was developed by a company called Wahoo. And uh, that this is what I use on my treadmill uh, to give me stats. It will tell me how, I, it can tell me my average pace. It can tell me my heart rate. If, my, if you've got heart rate sensors on your treadmill, uh, it can tell me how long I'm running and when I'm done and it can tell me how far I'm done. And at the end of it, it gives me all of my stats that I want as well. Um, what I do for biking, and this admittedly is something that most people probably would not do, but if I do, a good friend of mine told me one time that I was a good idea taking a step too far, uh, which I always really liked as a description. Uh, but since I do a lot of bike, I don't use an actual exercise bike for my biking. I use a street bike that's hooked up to a bike computer for the back tire. Uh, and I, and the reason I do that is that I need to have data that I can send to my coach. Um, I use a, something called a Wahoo kicker, K I C K R just because you can exercise doesn't mean you can spell. Um, and the, the Wahoo kicker takes the place of your back tire on the bike. And then I use a couple of different apps. And so when I get an, when I uh, train, I wake up in the morning and I look in my inbox and my coach has a, a, a training workout there. The training workout gets sent to my bike through the bike computer and I lose all control of the resistance, which means that I can't make it easier when it's really hard, uh, which is no fair. And he's a sadist, but that's just who he is. Um, and then at the end of the workout, he gets a spreadsheet that shows how fast I was pedaling, how hard I was pedaling, uh, if I stopped at any points, and he can you know, make adjustments and workouts from there. You aren't going to necessarily want to do all of that, but you do have bikes. You, you, um, it, you don't need an exercise bike that will necessarily uh, be Bluetooth compatible to have something that's moderately accessible. If you can make it go, and if you've got buttons to increase or decrease the tension, your Apple watch or your iPhone can tell you how many calories you've burned. You tell it that you're doing an indoor cycle and it will keep track of your amount of time. It doesn't tell you things like how fast you're pedaling, but it will tell you your heart rate, which will give you an idea if you're pedaling hard enough. Um, and so it, it, it will uh, get, give you again some data. I need more data than most people again, because I'm, I'm paying a coach. And if I'm paying someone, I'm gonna give them everything they want because I'm paying them. Um, at this point, what I would really like to do, I'd like to do two things. One, I am going to hand out, I'm going to just take these cards around and start passing them out from table to table because I went to the trouble of railing in the bike alley. You're going to go to the trouble of taking them home. <laughs> Here you go. This looks good. Uh, pass the cards. I'm going to pass them around to everyone. Um, Although you already know the web address, it's on there. It's speedyturtle.net. Um, yes, they do have a turtle on them. Uh, <laughs> if you are interested in a in in, in a non Braille card, I do have cards that have that that don't have dots on them. Um, God help you. Uh, <laughs> but what I would really like to do with this part of it is to find out how pe what people are doing for for accessible exercise at home, what worked for you during COVID when we were all shut inside and couldn't talk to people. Uh, and I'd like for this to become a forum where folks can share ideas. I'm happy to take questions on things that I do. Uh, but I think this would be a lot more interesting if it's interactive. 
Um, so that's what we're going to do at this point. If you hold up a hand, it's going to be there for a while. Uh, if by chance I see it, then I'm off to the local TV stations and I will have raised my money for my race across America and I will see you on the other side. Um, so, but do, 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 you know, there are lots of apps that are out there and there are apps that will do anything. I use an app called Tavada, which will let me do things like set up timer intervals for, I can set up the whole workout because I'll do things where I'm like sprinting for, you know, a half mile, then running for a mile, then doing a different pace for the next couple of miles. And it'll let me set up timers for all of that stuff. I think I paid nine bucks and that was just to get rid of the advertising. Um, so a lot of this stuff isn't super expensive. Um, uh, there's an app called RunKeeper. Uh, RunKeeper, a lot of folks have used. Uh, well, it, it gives you a lot of data and information. It will tell you again, how far you're going. It can tell you how fast you're going. I find it difficult to look at some of these apps when I'm running not on a treadmill because I'm busy being tied to someone else. Um, but the information is there if you want it. You can also get involved with things like Strava. Is anyone using Strava? Are you? Is that a yes or a no? Yeah. Yay, all right, I'm not using Strava, um, but I'm really glad you are. Strava is sort of Facebook for athletes and people share their workouts and you either feel really good because you're like, oh yeah, I just did a thousand miles in 20 minutes or you're like, I didn't work out today. Um, but it's, so it's very much the, 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 the pressures of social media uh, brought, brought to exercise. Um, so Strava is, 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 is pretty accessible. And so you can join in with, and I'm not a very good social media person. I'm about to get a whole lot better because I'm gonna have to be. Uh, so maybe I'll download Strava today. But with all of that being said, with a little bit of the time that we have left, I'd love for, for people to talk about what has worked for them, what hasn't worked for them. If you don't have anything that you want to ask, you can go on your phones and go to speedyturtle.net and sign up for email updates from, from our newsletter when we get going. Uh, again, it is a shell of a website at this point, but it will be built out. Um, and I really need numbers. And uh, we just launched this a couple of days ago. So when you look into that, there's like five people there. I know we're just getting started. They'll become more. Tell your friends. So do we have any, would anybody like to share some other accessible exercise stuff that, uh, that, that you've been doing? Go for it. It is. It does. And what the gentleman from Louisiana was saying is he was he was saying yay to the concept two rowing machine. If you don't want to row and you still want to use erg data, they also have this dreadful contraption called a ski erg that works on your upper body and your abdomen. It's sort of the equivalent of double polling when you're skiing. Um, I have a love hate relationship with it. Um, but it will give me my data. And, uh, as, and, and, uh, since, since I got my start in a lot of fitness stuff, skiing, I still do a lot of, a, a decent amount of cross country skiing and I'm very vain about it. And I want to be able to, and, and as I get older, I want to be able to beat the young, the little whippersnappers. So every year before I ski, I spend, you know, in, in November, I'm supposed to be taking the rest of the year off and probably, uh, around Thanksgiving, I'll start working on the ski erg so that I can stomp the little whippersnappers uh, when I go skiing later this year, because that's important. For, for, for folks who are wondering as far as like age and stuff goes, I'm, and, and not, that, not that age is everything because it's not, I'm, I'm 55. So uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not Joe back there who's like 13 telling you to do <laughs> telling you to do all this stuff and thinking yeah you can do it you've got lots of energy i'm more like you <laughs> joe you're not 13 i know <laughs> are there but it was fun to get to pick on you <laughs> are there are, are there other things that people have used that you did during covid uh goals that you would like to achieve questions that you have for me uh anything at all uh, over the next couple of minutes while, while I'm here. Uh, in fairness, I have to take off right after this is over because I have a presentation at 11 for my boss at Hilton and I've got to run home and get set up. So if you have any questions for me, now is a great time. Or if you don't get to answer your question, ask your question now, how can you do it? Yes, and it's getting more energetic as we go. Yes, please go ahead, Sandra. 
Yes, Dave, I'm going to ask a question on behalf of the young hunter snappers, as you call them. You know, perhaps you're 16 or 14 or, and maybe exercise has not been something you've really given much thought of. How can someone who is very young and maybe doesn't have access to all the latest and greatest, how can they get motivated to begin an exercise program when they are at a young age so that it will follow them through their life and they not be at age such as mine and, you know, struggle a bit. It does wonders for your love life. Um, <laughs> and, um, so uh, you asked, um, it, 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 what, it, 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 here, here's my theory on that to sort of elaborate a little bit, and, and, and this, get, this gets complex, so bear with me a little bit. I, d I don't believe that we blind or visually impaired people have a concept of what other people really look like and what kind of shape they're in or are not in. And I think as a result, we have that a lot of us are way more body conscious than, than if it's possible than the average American. As a result of that, if you are inter and, and, and if you want to do something where you know that you are improving your physical appearance, exercise can do it. Uh, and that's that that sounds, I don't know, it sounds kind of tacky and mean, but it's true. You know, if you are running or walking uh, or doing push-ups or doing sit-ups, you are helping your physical appearance. And when you help your physical appearance, uh, you feel better about yourself. And when you feel better about yourself, you present more of an aura of confidence. And when you present more of an aura of confidence, you have better interactions with other people. That's my theory. Um, and it, it, as somebody who has incredible body issues and who had an eating disorder when I was in college to go along with everything else or whatever, it, 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 that has worked for me. Uh, and when I'm feeling really insecure and down on myself and not happy with myself. I know I can go run or ride, not swim. Swim just makes me feel worse. Um, but, and I do feel, and, and I ultimately feel better uh, uh, in, in the future. So that's what I would offer as, as a reason to exercise. And it can be cheap. If you can find a running guide, you know how much it costs to run with a running guide? About a couple dollars to buy the clothesline to cut a, a, a rope for tandem. Uh, so that you can run, you know, tethered at the wrist or walk tethered at the wrist. If you don't have a guide, you know how I found my last triathlon guide? Anyone want to guess? You're very close. I advertise on a triathlon forum. I put a thing out that was like, hey, it's tender for triathletes, except I don't need you to sleep with me. I need you to get me to the finish line. <laughs> and, 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 and I found a guide. <laughs> and, uh, and and I found I could be a lot more outgoing if I'm hiding behind a computer screen. Um, <laughs> and when I'm one on one, I'm not nearly as, as you know. But it you you can advertise, and you will get uh, hits back where people are people don't know that you want to run or that you want to participate in this stuff. Um, and other people, I've asked my guide before, why in the world do you want to be tied to another human being for? 13, 14 hours while we do an Ironman. And his answer surprised me, which was, it's really boring to do it alone. Um, I thought, oh, I hadn't thought about that. We get to suffer together. Um, we get to sing bad songs to each other. We were singing songs about baby goats during this last Ironman. Um, you can Google it. It's Tom T. Hall. How do you talk to a little baby goat? Um, <laughs> you'll do anything to pass the time. Um, but <laughs> it's the last iron man it was octopus's garden uh you know and, and it gets stuck in your head and you get to bother each other with it but people will do this and one of the things i was afraid of in the beginning is that someone's doing this because they're feeling bad for me or i'm their project or whatever that may be the case in the beginning but it won't stay that way that a relation the relationship that you develop with your guide once you find someone that you really click with is unbelievable uh my 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 triathlon and now psych and, and just, uh, race across america guide is probably my best friend uh at this point uh that's in part because we've seen each other at our absolute best and worst um 
you know, you see each other pee. And once you've crossed that line, there's just no turning back. Um, so, um, so you can advertise, you can advertise on Facebook. You can, there's a fantastic triathlon group here called Triloco. They happen to be used to blind or visually impaired people because one keeps showing up at a lot of their stuff. Um, and uh, there, there are, I, I know that there are a lot of people who'd be willing to, to, to work with you as a guide. If you look for something like a guide, think small. Don't think I'm going to do an Ironman or I'm going to do a marathon. Think I'm going to walk a 5K or walk a mile. Um, the worst thing that you can do when you're exercising is do too much at the beginning because someone's like, I'm going to take this on all at once. And then you really hurt. And then you don't come back the next day. And then you don't come back the day after. And then you forget by the third day and you're done. Think small, think little bites. When you're taking this on, set your goals where you know you can obtain it. I can do five push-ups today. Great. I can do six next week. Great. You know, I can do seven leg bends while I'm waiting on my toast. Great. Think small and get and let your goals expand in incremental progress uh, so that you can achieve your goals because it's not any fun to miss your goals. So set goals that you can achieve and then keep making them bigger and bigger. I promised I'd let you ask questions. I want to be quiet, which is really hard for me to do and take another question if anyone has one. Okay, Dave, this question is from one of our KSB students. <laughs> And he would like to know that when you exercise, does do you still get stressed out or does that? Happen? Yes. Yes, I get stressed out. I work in a stressful job. Um, I have a lot of expectations that people have of me. Um, you know, I've, I've, I, uh, exercise does not eliminate stress, but it helps me to manage stress. And uh, it helps me to, to ground myself. It helps me to refocus on myself. It gives me time to think about what went well with the day, what did not go well for the day, what I can do better the next time around. And here's the other thing about exercise. It's not always, it, it, there's some times that you're exercising when you're like, this is just not going my way. And that's okay. Fight through it, slog through it, count that as a victory, and you will have days when it goes a lot better. Um, but no, it doesn't eliminate all stress, but it sure helps me manage it. I have a question. Um, this is for me. I saw, touched, experienced a tracking device, but it was not, I have a problem with watches and things and just, I don't know, feeling claustrophobic and wearing them. But this was a ring and it seemed to have three little sensors on it and it could do heart rate and steps. And Ooh. have you seen those? I have not seen those, but I would like to have one of those, especially if it ha if I can get one that has an Iron Man little insignia on it so I can brag while I'm wearing it. <laughs> did I tell you I recently did one? Um, and and for, and for those of that are, that are out on Zoom who didn't hear that, uh, he believes it's called the Aura Ring, and uh, I'm I'm very interested in that. Uh, so that is something that I will be googling later on to get more information on. And if you keep in touch with me, we'll find it together. Right. Yeah, I'm very interested in that. Other questions or comments, or do you just want me to go away? Jane, go for it. The trainer. I bought like the little $30 thing and took it on to my private Yep. And stuck it in my living room. So if you have it like already, $30 on Amazon, get a little trainer, you know, pick up some cables, get a little bit of stuff, and it's going to be great. And I'm like, I don't Yes, you can. That is absolutely correct, uh, and and you're right. Those those little trainers and and 
um, you know, all it's really doing is getting your wheel up off the ground so that then you can just ride your bike in place and you turn your, your street bike into an exercise bike. And when you want to make it harder, you just change the gears. That is a fantastic idea. This is Scott Spaulding. There's also a uh, little, uh, I guess you call them under the desk pedaling things, which you can also use for your legs or your arms. You know, depending on if you have it on a table or on the floor, that you can, oh, that's all it is, is a pedal mechanism. That's right. There, there are. And you know what else there are? And this, again, is about 25 or 30 bucks. If you're, if you're thinking, I don't want to do this aerobic stuff. I want to be a weightlifter person and look like, you know, and, and look like the Hulk. You can get resistance bands for 25 bucks from Amazon. They're better for your joints than weights. If you drop them, they don't hurt your toes. You can bring them to a hotel. Uh, Joe and I, when I was still working at APH, we're in Germany, and uh, I took my resistance bands to Germany and spent a whole night like doing just resistance band stuff to sort of ground myself after a, 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 a long day. Um, and so, yes, they will go to hotels. Um, they'll go anywhere, and they're they're cheap, they're replaceable, um, and so it, it's a fantastic way of, of of just taking something with you. You literally, what you can do for for accessibility with exercise is set your budget, decide how much you are willing to put into having something, how, how, how much of a diehard you are, if you want it to be accessible. I loved when I bought my treadmill and which was several years ago. Um, I bought it because it was Bluetooth compatible and I knew I was going to be able to see results on my phone. The trade-off was that it had a soft touch uh, display. And so I took, you know, braille labels and put start, stop, up, down, blah, 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 made it accessible in 10 minutes, um, you know, and used, uh, not Ira, what's the other one? Um, be my eyes. I couldn't think of it for anything um, uh, to do it. And so it didn't cost me anything to make it accessible. Other thoughts or questions in the last couple of minutes that we've got here before I let you go back to your day and, <laughs> and all that kind of good stuff. Yes, sir. Joe is growing up. That's right. Um, <laughs> during COVID, you know, we would take walks, but the biggest thing for me is I wanted to wonder what I was eating because, you know, as a blind person, you don't often get um, information on that. Right. So being able to kind of keep track of my calorie intake was, was great. That is a fantastic idea. And now that I'm not training for the next couple of months, I need to desperately grab a hold of my fitness pal because I eat junk all the time. And I can get away with it because I've, of the, the intensity of the workouts, since that's not happening for the next six weeks or so, right in time for the holidays. Uh, <laughs> we, we're going to have to actually start paying attention to what we eat. Um, so my fitness pal is a fantastic way of doing that. Ten more seconds and then I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll call it good uh, if we don't have any questions that come up. That's right. And for those who, for those on Zoom who can't hear, it's called Revision Fitness. It was developed by a blind person who's a personal trainer. If I remember correctly, there's a free version of that and there's also a paid version. Uh, is that correct? It, it was developed during the COVID era so that people could, um, in, in, during the bad old days, uh, when we were all huddled in our dark caves in the corner. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so that so that people could train and exercise, and it is still there. And I forget what it costs, but it's minimal. And again, for for folks who can't hear on Zoom, that they were saying that you can look them up on Zoom on on uh, Zoom on YouTube at Revision Fitness Training. And there are a lot of videos that you can watch or listen to or perceive the existence thereof. Well, it is always, and uh, I, 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 it is an honor and a privilege to get to be part of uh, the TAD symposium. Uh, symposium. symposium. Uh, I always, always, always love being here. Uh, I missed one, which wasn't my fault, and I still feel bad about it. 
Uh, but thank you all very much. You've been really attentive. You've been a lot of fun for folks that are out there. And, and I know I keep harping on this and almost like a, a, a you know, a, a barker at a baseball game or whatever, soda. Uh, <laughs> but I will be more than happy to help you out with anything that I can as far as getting and and you know, putting you in touch with folks who can help out uh, with exercise or if you're looking for fitness coaches, I know fitness coaches who happen to have worked with blind people because they worked with me. Uh, I will be happy to help out in any way that I can. And the way that you can get in touch with me is Dave. At That's right, Dave at speedyturtle.net. You all have a fantastic conference. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm off to make my boss happy. Uh, thank you all once again for allowing me to be here. Dave. Dave Todd, uh, I just wanted to thank you for all the years that you've given to Tad. This is our 10th year. You've been with us for nine years, and we want to present you with a Lewis Braille coin. And Kathy is actually going to be able to give it to you right after her room to get it. So ooh, ooh. Awesome, and I am a, I am a huge coin collector. So this is uh, this is wonderful coin collecting tri trivia time. You know what coin collectors are called? Numismatists. You can look it up. I'm right. Um, but <laughs> so thank you all very much. It is a, it really is an honor to be here, and I look forward to talking with you all soon. Share my email address. Have people get in touch. This is going to be a wild ride. And I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you. We'll see you next year. I'll be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, wasn't that awesome? Makes me want to go out and exercise your choppers really choo choo choo. Yeah, that, <laughs> that donuts, coffee. No, just <laughs> kidding. Um, now I am going to introduce. Mr. Lonnie Swafford, who is going to do something we haven't done yet this morning. You all know what that is, right? That's right, door prizes. We all like winning things. And everyone, whether you are in this room or whether you are out there on Zoom, hey, a rhyme and I didn't even realize. Um, everyone- a door? No, we, we don't have doors. Um, we keep that portal closed. Um, we're gonna have Lonnie tell us how door prizes will be done. And I think he may have some winners. Hi. Hey, Sandra. Thank you. Um, I have one door prize we're going to announce now. And then we're going to announce one uh, before You're the end of the- You're talking in the microphone. The Zoom people might not hear you. Oh. Get a little Better? All right. Okay. Uh, we're going to announce one door prize now and then one uh, door prize before the end of the symposium. Um, so we're going to draw for the first one. Is this a Zoom or in the room? This is, no, this is going to be for the KSB. Okay. Yeah, Lonnie is actually doing virtual. I'm doing virtual, virtual door prizes door for KSB. Oh, so, uh, all right. All right, so the first name is Macy Spiegelmeyer. Congratulations. All right, then if we could have our door prize diva, Miss Laura Stevens. Are you in this room? Oh, if someone could yell. Um... I guess I should have given her a clue that I was going to call upon her. Now, Laura will be doing the door prize to someone that's in the room. As long as you have registered, you are in the mix for a prize. And we have some really good prizes this year. I don't know what they are, but they're really, really good. Doors. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I like it. Laura? Okay. I'm sorry. <clears throat> we are waiting. You know, there's just something about pauses that are dramatic pauses. Yeah, dramatic. That, yeah. that commercial on the uh, 
Alexa. Hi. About the dramatic pause. It's Somebody awesome. Heard that one. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So I have my little container with the names in it. And um, Todd, I know we have some gift cards that are going to be given away. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so which one are we going to give away first? Are they? Uh, we are uh, the, the, I have the $10 gift card. For Amazon? Yes. Okay, $10 Amazon gift card. And if I don't dump the uh, names, it is going to go to, as long as you're in the room, because that's, that's a thing here. You have to be in the room. Kate Stamper. Is she in here? All right. So congratulations. All right, I'm going to just do them one now. Hug. So. Am I just doing the one now? Yes. Okay. We're gonna do one for a second. Okay, cool. Okay. Is that all we have? All right. More door prices later. Okay. Um now. We are going to hear from two individuals. We're going to hear from Joe Hodge. He's a longtime presenter at our symposium. And we're going to also hear from Danielle Burton, who is a longtime member of NFBKY. So Dan and Joe are going to talk to us all about something that is near and dear to us as blind and visually impaired folks. And that is screen readers. We all have to access that screen. So I'm going to turn this over to Joe and Danielle. Hey, Sandra. Wipe down over here, Danielle. Keep coming. Here we go. Keep coming. There's a space right here to come in. This way. This way. Yep. This way doesn't work when I'm in my All right. Sorry. I hear this way and I don't know what to do. Here we go. There Put your go. hand there and that'll guide you. There you go. Okay, it's kind of wet. I'm going to take like off that. my mask to do this. Okay. Oh, there's a dog. Yeah, go Violet. Yeah, yeah. Violet's like dragging me over here to him. Anyway. All right, so the mic is going to be right to it, kind of in the middle of us here, Daniel. So if you take your hand. There. Right, okay, cool. Yeah. Where did my mic go? We only have one. Oh, oh, for your hearing it? Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I don't know where that is. Who did it? I didn't want to crack only on me. Okay. All right, everybody. So um, my name is Joe Hodge, and I'm here uh, with Danielle Burton. Uh, we are going to be talking about the different uses of screen readers and just maybe why knowing more than one is important. Um, sorry. Uh, there we go. Um, so. I'm looking forward to this because this is something that's near and dear to, to me as uh, someone who basically I loved one screen reader, screen reader as I was growing up. Then when I, went to, when I got to college and got my jobs, it was actually essential to know more than one screen reader. And now, well, I won't give it away, but I know a lot of them. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, when Todd was asking for uh, presentations to do, I was really excited to do uh, to propose this one because I think as uh, folks who are going into the workforce, like at KSB, or just folks sitting in the audience that might be looking for a job, it, it, we're going to hopefully give you some things to think about as we as we go forward. Um, Danielle, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Oh, hi, my name is Danielle Burton, and I have been around Todd for quite a few years now. And like Joe said, I also have found myself in positions where I've needed to use multiple screen readers for school and now for work and accessibility testing. So it, it's been an adventure and I'm still learning a few other screen readers in the process. So some of them I can't 
very tell you about it yet because I haven't had enough practice, but that's beside the point. So one thing we're going to do here is go over the types of screen readers, because some people may not know, they may know one or they may know um, uh, two, but they may not know a lot of these. So I'm going to just kind of list off uh, some of these. So on Windows, and, and there might be other ones that I don't know or just didn't put down, uh, but for Windows, we have JAWS, NVDA, and Narrator. Those are the big three. Uh, for Mac, iPad OS, and iPhone is VoiceOver. Uh, Chromebooks use Chromevox. Android has TalkBack and Commentary Screen Reader, which is also called Jisho. Um, and <clears throat> so those are kind of the, the, the main screen readers for each operating system. Um, so one reason that you, know, you may have to know more than one is for features. So for example, on Android, I started using Commentary because it has OCR, full screen OCR, kind of like uh, screen recognition for iPhone. And TalkBack just doesn't offer that. So there are reasons that you, know, you look at a screen reader and you, you evaluate by feature set that can help you do the job. So we're gonna pull the audience. So how many folks out there, the screen readers I've listed off, do you know, how many know two or more? Uh, just go ahead and say yes or I or whatever. Yes. All right, how about three or more? So we shrunk a little bit. Four or more. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle, how many, how, how many do you know? Did you count? Because when I asked her on the oh, phone yeah. the other day, she was like, I don't know, I'm going to have to count. So I'm hoping she Yeah, I have to count on no sleep. So I think I counted four. Yeah, I, I actually got... Uh, two, four, five. I got about, I got six of them that I know roughly. So, uh, and a lot of that is because I do testing for, I did testing for, for years at APH uh, and had to learn them. So um, just to, just to make sure that things worked with, you know, everybody's uh, use case. Um, so here's the thing that the biggest question is, what is the importance of knowing uh, more than one screen reader? So one of the reasons is applications may get you 90% of the way there, and then you have to use another one to get 10%, the, the, the final 10. So uh, I think Dave has already left, but I was gonna pick on him because I was registering at a Hilton <laughs> for a summer convention, and I was doing it on my iPhone, and uh, I was using their website, I believe, because I didn't want to download an app. And I got to the calendar check-in and check-out, and it was completely inaccessible. Um, and so I had to jump over to my, I think Mac or windows, I'm not sure which one I use, but anyway, to, to, to do, to finish the job. So there's just times where you might have one screen reader and I, I love to be mobile. Uh, but there are just times that maybe it's useful to switch over from one to the other. Um, so, um, one of the big things for me, uh, when I got my first job, I grew up with using window eyes and um that's now defunct <laughs> so all that knowledge is wasteful uh but when i got my 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 second job here at uh, in louisville um i had to all of a sudden no jaws and thankfully the transition was actually pretty smooth but it could have made me a, a bit nervous so i think knowing how i mean you know let's be realistic knowing every key command is going to be very difficult you know i don't think anybody in this room could tell you every key command for for even one screen reader i mean uh, Jaws is, is extensive, expansive now. So um, I think that the important thing is, though, just knowing the basics. Um, Danielle, do you want to talk a little bit about your college experience? Sure. And this is Danielle. Um, you know, when I was in college, I used a lot of various screen readers. I used um, VoiceOver with QuickTime Player a lot to record videos because that worked out better. But then I would have to switch over to say JAWS to do, you know, papers and things like that. So I, I did a lot of switching back and forth between voiceover and JAWS. Uh, now, as a talent lab apprentice for American Foundation for the Blind in the digital accessibility and inclusion, I had to learn how to use MBDA because that's what is the screen reader a choice for testing simply because it doesn't cheat i guess from my understanding jaws can cheat a little bit and help you out when things aren't fully accessible so we use mbda and i had to kind of learn how to do that and jump over my fear of using mbda which was a little bit intimidating 
And I think that's a really great thing. So I know the one of the things uh, that the symposium slash uh, weekend is about is facing your fears. So it can be a little scary to look at different screen readers and, and say, I, I'm going to try to master this. Or, uh, you know, I, I get the sense of like when I go to Android sometimes and I'm messing with TalkBack and I, I just get this sort of. Uh, my wife can probably attest to this. I do this about every month uh, <laughs> where I'll, I'll go to Android thinking I'm going to ex experience something better. And then I go, oh, this is not like iOS. And I, I immediately like put the phone down and I, I, I run back to Apple. And the, the thing is, you have to understand that uh, every operating system is going to behave differently. The screen readers are going to be different. It may not be exactly what you want. And that's what you have to take from something is, you know, you have to look at it more as a tool and what tool gets the job done the best for you? And it may be different from me to Danielle or uh, from Danielle to you. So um, I think that's something to, to kind of consider. Uh, when I was in college, one of the things I faced was we had testing, uh, a certain place we had to go for testing on the computer. And in that lab, they only allowed for one screen reader at the time. And I believe, uh, I think for us at Ball State, it was window eyes at the time, but it might be JAWS now. Um, but regardless, if you don't know that, so say you're you're in school and you're only learning NVDA or you're only learning iPhone, uh, voiceover on the iPhone, uh, which a lot of people are doing now, um, when you go into that testing facility, you're not going to be able to use that screen reader. Um, and it's something to think about that, you know, you're going to have a lot of, not only do you have to know the test, you know, how to, the answers for the test, you now are going to have to understand how to use JAWS and, uh, or, or another screen reader. And I think, you know, having a little bit of extra knowledge or just kind of playing with something on your free time is really going to cut down on some of the just nervousness you could feel. Um, because sighted people don't have to face that, right? They're, they're going to a computer. It doesn't matter. They sit down, they read the, they, they read the text. They don't have to worry about navigating. They can move the mouse. <laughs> but it's something that we have to think about as, as, as a blind and visually impaired individuals. So um, it's just something to kind of have on the plate there. Um, this is Danielle. Another thing to consider for those of us that are brow readers, or if you're deaf blind and rely on refreshable brow devices, every screen reader has a different brow support and different level of brow support. Some are better than others, depending on what you need. I, I think most of us know that brow displays in iOS work really well. Uh, Android is catching up, which is awesome. Um, you know, if you're on Windows and mobile, on Windows with JAWS and NVDA, you know, most of it does work pretty much the same, but, you know, there are also different commands. Sometimes you have to do different bro codes and things like that. So that's also something to consider. So, so Danielle, with Braille, um, what challenges have you faced? Because um, I think when we first met, <laughs> oh. I would I would read your I Facebook. Might have thrown my computer out the window. I promise I didn't do that. I wanted to. Because I mean, obviously, being deafblind, you really need Braille to work efficiently with the screen reader. So, so what challenges have you have you faced in that? So several years ago, Jaws, you had to install an extra driver to get the a non-freedom scientific braille display to work and even when you did this and mind you this has been about four or five years ago it only connected when it wanted to and i do me only when it decided to i mean i would restart jaws about i don't know five times why is this not working uh, now it has gotten loads better and i was really impressed the other day when I plugged it in and I didn't have to install any crazy software. So that's another big challenge to have. Another challenge is sometimes uh, some screen readers require you to type in computer braille. So you might have to learn several braille codes in order to make a refreshable braille display work for you. That sounds fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not really. This is why I switched to NVD. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's lots to think about there. Um, one other final thing we kind of want to talk about here is challenges we found on the web. So this could be from mobile and then desktop or desktop to mobile. And I already talked about the hotel thing, but what I will mention here is um, 
sometimes on on the iPhone in particular when I'm when I'm browsing, uh, you guys have probably seen this a lot lately is when you go to a news website, you'll hear it constantly repeat, read out like the video timer, or it will draw your focus to an ad and it's hard to get away from it. Um, one thing I love about Android is the fact that when I use that, I can just um, get on a web page with a news article and I can say, hey, Google, read this article to me. And it will actually do text um, to speech for that article. And you can control the speed. It's separate from, it's separate from your um, actual screen reader uh, speed. But it's really clear. And what's really great is it skips all the advertisement. So it literally is kind of like reading uh, an article um, bare bones. So kind of like the experience you get on NFB Newsline, um, which is really awesome. And another reason I use that, that website, it's just plug, right? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I, I think that uh, there, there could be reasons that you know, as you as you start using different operating systems, you might find, well, I like Android for this, or I like Windows for this, or uh, I like Mac for that. But uh, Daniel, I think you had a, a thought there on the different. I, I did. Um, I was testing the ESPN website um, as one of my practice things for work, and one thing I noticed immediately when I opened it on, say, Safari on iOS it was a lot nicer versus when I opened it on uh, Windows, but an NVDA and I said, I never want to touch this again. So, you know, knowing multiple screen readers in that instance was very nice in uh, if I ever want to visit ESPN for my own personal preference, I will probably choose my iOS device versus NVDA. Yeah, so it's, it's just very interesting um, sort of thinking about all the choices we have um, out there. And, and it's amazing because, you know, when I was a kid, there was really two choices for a while. And now with with the mobile platforms and, and different things, as you heard the list in the beginning, it's pretty ex extent, uh, it's, it's grown a lot uh, significantly. So um, do, we, do we have any questions out there? So we're, we kind of have two different parts of this presentation. Um, so I want to kind of touch on any questions that somebody might have, if, if there are any. That was Lonnie. All right, hey, Lonnie. Yeah. So Lonnie's question is, can we talk about the learning curve from going from iOS to Mac um, and what that might look like? So Daniel, do you want to take that first? Sure, uh, this is Danielle. I think one of the big things, and Joe, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, one thing to remember when you're navigating with the Mac, you, you definitely have to be constantly using the modifier or voiceover key, which, what is it? Control. Control option. Uh, well, I have not changed the caps lock, caps guys, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is what happens when you highly customize your things. The they do have quick nav as well, just like the iPhone. They so, do. So you can toggle that on and off. That would help. But yeah, you do have to hit those modifiers a you lot. You do have to hit those a lot. And if you're like me and you don't want to do finger gymnastics I, and not <laughs> don't have that dexterity, I switched it to caps lock, which is why I don't ever remember the original command anymore. But you do have to use that and you do have to remember to interact with elements. And mm -hmm. that is a big thing, especially for someone like me switching between Windows and Mac. I'll be sitting there going, why is this not working? Oh, yeah, I have to interact with the element. So that's kind of, I think, the biggest thing. You have to hit your modifier key, whichever one you choose with down and up, just so that you can actually get into elements to quick ways to interact with tables and things like that. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, Lonnie, that you would notice is that there, uh, when on Mac, there's no touch at all. So you lose the touchscreen element. There are hotkeys, which much, much more like Windows. So like, yeah, you, you, you know, screen. no, not on Mac. You have a touchpad. Yeah, a touchpad. That that, I mean, it does use iPhone gestures. Yeah, it does, but it's not the same yeah. as like a, a okay. quote unquote touchscreen, yeah. you know, like like a surface or something. Right. Like that. Um, so the the big thing that I would say is learning the hotkeys. So like, you know, you can go to like uh, your computer with like command shift C uh, would bring up like your my computer on Mac, for example. Uh, so there's like commands you'd have to learn. 
but the learning curve, curve is not huge. I, I would honestly say probably a week's time, you'll, you'll have what you need right. to know for the most part. Um, and then you'll learn as you kind of gradually grow. It's just facing that fear and saying, hey, you know what? I'm not going to get irritated if I can't get my downloads folder to open in five minutes. <laughs> I'm not going to just throw you it out. Also use the voiceover <laughs> tutorial. Uh, I can't think of the command off the top of my head, but I, I will be happy to give that to you later today because you can't open. And the voiceover tutorial on the Mac is actually pretty helpful. The actually really cool thing is when you get a Mac for the first time and you do the voiceover command, it will bring up that tutorial. I think you have to hit v or something i forget but um it'll guide you through it command f5 will turn it on yeah command f5 will turn on voiceover and then it will read you uh it'll say are you familiar with voiceover press this if you're not press this and it will walk you through how to interact with voiceover and that's really handy any other questions hey lisa So, so Lisa wants to know, can we talk about the difference between Microsoft accessibility versus the screen readers? And, and I assume you're talking about Microsoft Narrator or are you talking about like the Microsoft Office products? No. That was built in Excel. Okay, yeah. Um, uh -huh. You, you want to handle that I haven't first? touched Narrator much, so you want okay, to yeah, that Okay, yeah, I, I got it, yeah. So Narrator <laughs> used to be this awful thing. <laughs> uh, back in like Windows XP, windows 7 even you know like actually the reason lonnie i switched to mac uh primarily was because i had my own apartment when i moved to louisville i i didn't have any sighted friends because i was lonely uh and and uh, i just got here actually but <laughs> uh, but i couldn't I, I had nobody that could actually restart my computer or or get into the bios for me on, with windows so I, I had no way that i could reset it on my own and at the time mac was the only operating system that allowed you to get into to it on your own as a blind person and reconfigure it from scratch. So you could install uh, the Mac OS all on your own, uh, which is why I went over there. And now Windows 10, thankfully, has fixed that. You could actually install Windows on your own um, uh, for the most part. I, I have ran into I, a few I actually did challenges. Not know this. Uh, I'm presenting and I'm learning as I'm standing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and you do that with Narrator, Lisa. That's where, I, so I'll get back to your question here. So, with Narrator, it's actually really good uh, for, for bare bones stuff. Um, so, you can do things like check your email, you could, you could get on online. Uh, I've, I actually went out to Microsoft with APH a few years ago. They are not calling it a full-fledged screen reader. They're very careful not to say they, they're not trying to uh, step on NVDA or JAWS's uh, uh, toes with anything, but they are definitely making improvements every Windows release uh, to making it, in my opinion, a viable option uh, for those who may not be able to afford JAWS or may just want an, another option, a free option with NVDA. So um will it be something that you could do heavy lifting <clears throat> lifting on with a job or something I, I you know i think it's just going to depend on what you encounter uh because one thing we didn't talk about is some jobs out there like when i worked at humana it was very secure uh they would not let us uh install any open source screen reader so like things like nvda that's open source we couldn't put on our system uh they just didn't want to take a security risk and you might face that um out there in the job market um i actually was working with somebody at the illinois school for the blind who is uh, uh not able to install nvda because of that same reason so it's not just places like humana it's actually school for the blinds that won't let you uh install a screen reader so it's, it's something to think about um when as you're you know like for example with jaws if you're having trouble i was trying to purchase microsoft office the other day and i kept getting stuck it would it wouldn't take my payment and I actually had to turn on narrator and do it. <laughs> so um, there are times like that where uh, JAWS focus just doesn't indicate exactly where it should be. And then you turn on narrator and it works. So I would say, Lisa, to, to, to use them all and just feel, I, I think, honestly, someone just starting out with Windows or, or who's never played with narrator, I think turn it on and you'll be surprised. That was a long answer. I feel like. Sorry, I'm very That's passionate. Okay. I'm very passionate about this stuff. Uh, <laughs> any other questions? All right, so we're going to move on to the second part of our uh, discussion here, and that is Google Workspace, formerly known as Google Docs. Yeah, we got the name <laughs> right this time instead of calling. I think me and Joe called it Google Docs for I don't know. 
the um, entire time we were putting this presentation yeah, together, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. And then so I congratulations. You got the name. <laughs> and then I Googled it and I was like, oh, workspace. And I'm like, oh, that's what we're going to call it now. OK, so I'm going to turn it over to uh, Danielle because she's actually used Docs way more than I or, sorry, workspace way more than I have. Uh, and she's going to kind of set you up and then I'll, I'll chime in. So Google workspace. Yay. And um, is, is a variety of apps and it includes doc sheets which is essentially my you know the equivalent of microsoft itself slides which is also the google version of microsoft powerpoint drive similar to dropbox calendar and mail and all of these are kind of all lumped together in g suite or google workspace and a lot of companies are now using this as opposed to Microsoft Office for a lot of reasons. One being that it is free, especially for smaller companies. It is free. They get quite a bit of storage, uh, a lot of storage. I think even just an individual account is 15 gigs. I'm not sure what a business one is, so quite a bit. And also, it has the advantage of being able to work across multiple platforms, multiple operating systems, Windows, iOS, Android, Mac OS. So a lot of people are now having more freedom to choose what kind of computers they use when they, you know, when Google Workspace is being used. So a lot of startups, I've been talking to a lot of folks in the in the blindness field that are developing products. Uh, we, we meet with a lot of uh, interesting companies and a lot of them will be using uh, Google Workspace. And, and I asked a few of them why that was, and it was exactly what Danielle said, it's free. Um, they didn't have to pay a Microsoft Office license. Uh, they're trying to get a product out. They don't have a lot of extra room. So one of the big things is as you're getting a job, um, if you're getting a job, for example, at a startup company or some a company that maybe hasn't been around for a while. I mean, and even now with the way the economy is, it wouldn't surprise me if more companies ditch Microsoft and go to a, a Google workspace. It's just something I think to definitely familiarize yourself with using. Um, talking with Todd the other night on the call, you know, he he kind of said, you know, I was, I was a little fearful of starting. I hope you don't mind me sharing this story, Todd. Uh, <laughs> I probably should have written that by you. Uh, I was, he was a little fearful of uh, starting to use Google at, at first. And then as he did it, sat with it for you know a little bit, he was like, it's just like Microsoft, you know? Um, and I think that's a key point to take away is, you know, something could be overwhelming. There's gonna be definitely some new keyboard yeah, shortcuts. There was definitely new keyboard commands, which we'll get I to think later. is intimidating. <laughs> yes, and and yes. it was intimidating. And I will be the first to tell you, I may or may not have had a few meltdowns while trying to fill out my first spreadsheet. Um, but with that being said, you know, you know, you, you learn then just the same as you would your screen readers. And, and that's another thing. And I think the other advantage I did forget to mention is collaboration mm -hmm. is a big thing with google workspace is you guys can all share one document and everybody can see it and everybody can work on it and i think that's really the true beauty of google workspace and google docs so Danielle, why did you start using uh the google product and the workspace and like at first what what made you start that? well mine's probably not your traditional method i got a brown up touch the original oh, in 2016 and one of the reasons i got it was because it was integrated braille support with google docs and i really wanted to be able to do that as a college student and share my work along with my classmates that way when i'm working on group projects with my group i could do that and that was when i really started using it and i looked at it and again, this is five, six years ago. Uh, I played with it on JAWS at that point in time, and it was awful, for lack of a better word. And I said I would never touch it on a PC again. Uh, never say never. <laughs> the, yeah, it came back to bite me. But it, it's gotten a lot better now. And I want to preface this by saying that you do have to turn on screen reader support mode. And I also recommend turning on braille support mode, especially in 
sheets just because it will help the navigation even if you're not using a braille display so that's something a little different is typically when you're using like microsoft office right with jaws or nvda you ought and let's say you had a braille display hooked up you automatically will see what is written on the screen with your braille display with google docs or google sheets or any of that uh, any of the products here listed um pretty much what you have to do is turn on screen reader support and braille support. I've gotten a lot of technical support calls over the over the years, uh, just with people, teachers asking, uh, why can't they display, why isn't the braille display showing anything? <laughs> I found out the hard way. Yeah. Guys. I, turn, I opened that spreadsheet, I said, I can't see it. <laughs> it really... And I spent like an hour trying to find the command to turn on the Braille support. It was kind of a traumatizing experience. So I'm sparing you guys the trauma. Of, it, you do have to turn it off. It sort of defies the screen reader logic, right? Because I mean, typically the screen reader just reads whatever is being spoken. So, you, and a lot of times you can, even if you don't turn on the screen reader aspect of, of the Google, you can actually hear some stuff as you're airing around, but nothing is being output to your Braille display, which is very it, it was off-putting. Very unnerving. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so did you use Google Docs at all in college or was, was that something that I did? I used it in college and I, I didn't necessarily use it for my own schoolwork, but I did use it uh, anytime I, we had small group projects, which you have a lot of those in college. It was very helpful in a group. OK, do you have Google Drive? Do you have? OK, so we would just create a Google Doc and put all of our stuff there and then we would do google slides and i was able to add my stuff to the slide and let the ones with vision have fun with making it all nice and fancy so that was really helpful in in school and now that i'm working in my job we use google workspace for everything Wow, so I'm I'm bet you glad you're, you're glad you had that knowledge. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was a job. little less over. I mean, it was a little scary using it on the computer. I was like, oh, now I have to use this on the computer now. Uh, yeah, but so we don't typically. For me, I don't use Google Workspace that often. Um, which only when I'm dealing with troubleshooting for like a student or something like that with a braille display. Uh, but I am glad I know it. And, you know, I, I see people transitioning to this because of what Danielle said in the beginning, cross-platform. Uh, I think it'll be something that more people use as, as time goes on. Uh, Microsoft Office is also cross-platform, but um, the the mobile versions especially are, are very uh, trimmed down. So I think some people might, you know, with Google Docs, may uh, uh, Google Workspace may uh, prefer that. Um, so I think the biggest thing, one of the big takeaways here is that you, you want to be learning and experiencing things before tossed into a situation. It's kind of a common theme uh, to this whole presentation, I think, bringing it back. Um, and, you know, for example, if you're if you're getting a job and you're and you're asked to know Google Workspace, not knowing it could be very off putting. And, and so um, just that overwhelmingness you could feel. And I think um, the more time you could spend with something like that, all you need is a, as a Gmail account. Um, I would, I would, uh, encourage you to go out there and play with it. There are a lot of tutorials online as well. If you just Google again, uh, they're getting a lot of, uh, mention here, uh, <laughs> for, for how to use with Google JAWS. how to use Google. Yeah, exactly. How do you use, jo how do you use this with JAWS? How do you use this with voiceover? How do you use this with, you know, it, 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 pretty much any tutorial will come up. The other great thing with with the TAD program here is Daniel or I, we have our emails on the website. Feel free to reach out to us anytime with any questions. Um, but I wanna get into, uh, so if you guys have a pen and paper, slate and stylus, note take or whatever you have, um, uh, probably the next part will be interesting to write down. So you mentioned keyboard shortcuts earlier. I, I did. Do, do you wanna give them the keyboard shortcuts for the braille and the screen, uh, turning on the screen? Yes, screen? this is Danielle. Um, I am saying the Windows command, but obviously is for Mac, it will be command and option is the alternative. And to turn on screen reader support is control alt Z as in zebra. To turn on the braille support is control alt H as in hotel. Yes, I spent hours trying to find this, which is why I, uh, every single time I spend literally hours 
So yeah. I'll, they, I, they they do have an accessibility menu, I think, where you can see these, but no, you, the accessibility menu does not come up until it's oh, enabled. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. That there you go. The hard way as well. It's, it's been so, a while. So yeah, so this commands will be your <laughs> I think I Googled as well for that. But yeah, it's 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 something that is not very discoverable and it makes it look like Google Google Workspace is completely inaccessible at first until you until you do that. So that's a huge tip to know. Yeah, can yes, you, can you repeat the, that? yes. Control Alt Z as in zebra turns on screen reader support. Control Alt H as in hotel turns on braille support. If you're using a Mac, it's command option. All right, so do we have any questions about the Google Workspace? No, it's Lonnie here. Hey, Lonnie. So you talk about the interchangeability, like if I start something in Google Docs and move it over to Word, if I actually want to use it back and forth, what that's like. So Lonnie's question is, can you start something in Google Docs or, or the Google Workspace in general? And then like, so if I'm creating a doc, uh, could I move that from Google Docs to Microsoft Word, for example? Um, so you could, you could select all and copy. Um, so, so what's gonna happen with Google, when you create something in Google Workspace, it's gonna be sort of like Microsoft Office's uh, options where it'll, it'll create a file. Um, and you can you can take that file and copy it over. You, you could risk, losing some formatting in my experience yeah um, um sometimes it breaks the formatting what i would probably do is look for some sort of converter there's probably a converter from like i'm not aware of anything off the top of my head but there's just because i don't use docs a lot it's something i don't have to think about uh but there probably is a converter that you could create a, a google doc file and then translate it over to a a, a docker docs file from Microsoft. I, I believe you can, Lonnie. And I think it's like a under the share settings. Um, I would have to double check because I don't use Microsoft. And I haven't used it in a very long time, but I can check back and get an answer to you. Yeah, I know like with Microsoft Office in particular, just because that's what I'm more familiar with, there is a way that you can save something as you know, you can create like just a text file if you or want, a PDF, or a PDF, or, right? I, I know you can create it. So I'm wondering if there's a way. I, yeah, I think so. I just haven't done yeah. it in a quite a while. Uh, any other questions on Google Workspace? Hey Pam. So, so Pam's question, just for the Zoom folks, is uh, for the for the screen reader and the Braille support. Is that a toggle where you have to do it every time? Or do, you know, is it do you have to do it every time, or is it like a toggle? No, um, no. Once you turn it on and you're in your Google account, it should stay there. So far, I have not had to turn it on. I'm going to knock on wood right now <laughs> <laughs> because it is technology, and it, you know things happen but generally speaking you do not have to turn it on which is why i had spent an hour trying to find the command again i believe that's something that's saved in your google account because even when i go across platform it yeah. it typically remembers yeah even across platform so you should be okay um yep that's the one thing about having a google account is it does save that uh the other thing we can't really talk about is current uh, uh accessibility features Uh, any other questions? All, 
All right. Well, silence is, I mean, kind of scary. Either <laughs> you guys have all went to sleep or we did a good job. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I just want to say, you know, just final thoughts and tips here is with the stuff that we talked about, all of it, the screen readers, the Google workspace, it's all fearful. Like, you know, it can be overwhelming to, to a lot of people. You know, I'm very tech driven. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are not, you know, um, and I think uh, just, just ultimately, you know, you can always press Alt F4. <laughs> Alt F4 is kind of a uh, oh, rescue me. <laughs> or, or if you're on, yeah, or if you're on the Mac, Alt Q, Command Q, uh, will work as well. Uh, and you can just leave the document and and come back another day. It's kind of like what Dave was talking about earlier with exercising. There, there's going to be don't don't get into this thinking you're going to be a, become a master of of an operating system or of Google Workspace in in five minutes. It literally is a marathon. So you you need to uh, just set some goals. So today I'm going to learn how to get my downloads folder. Today I'm going to learn how to uh, to open a Google Sheets uh, document and and move around, and then build on that. And I think that's the way that that I've learned this stuff. Probably the way Danielle's learned this stuff. Yeah, I, I work from home and I had to learn how to use Google Sheets by myself. Nobody there. I promise you guys, I was almost in tears and I was texting a friend literally going, I can't do this. I can't do this. And randomly, I'll get a text message that says, I'm about to throw my Chromebook out the window or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I say that in the you know once you do jump over that hurdle, it, it really does get better. But just getting through that can be challenging, and we are all here if you need some extra support. Definitely, feel free to reach out to us at any time. Yeah, you know, I'd like to say just a word about Google Workspace. Yeah. Um, if you are familiar with Windows Office. No, no word or spell to the PowerPoint. Um, and really, it's, it's pretty easy to transition. I mean, it's really, I, I am not an expert by any means, but I'm very comfortable with it. And I think it's just about a day uh, because I'm familiar with office, very familiar with that. So the transition is almost seamless. And when I, as Joe said, when I first started out, if the accessibility features weren't there uh, when it was first right. developed, and it was a huge learning curve, and I was very intimidated by it. So I know. Like he called me and freaking then, out a few times. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell one in a little bit. I, I think he called me every day for a week. <laughs> um, no, I have had a lot of people say, oh, I didn't think it was accessible. Well, it really wasn't that great. At about several years ago, but it is now. And, and if I can just add one quick thing, not quite related to Google Docs or, or but it is related to the screen reader is uh, for my job a few years ago, I had to learn PowerPoint. And PowerPoint for me, like as a tech person, I was actually the, probably the most nervous about because there's so many things in PowerPoint that can go wrong with aligning, with uh, putting pictures in that just don't mean anything to me. Because it, it, it really like PowerPoint slides, the, the, the thing about them is, is for when you're doing a presentation, which is why I love coming here, uh, you, you basically show a PowerPoint or, or a slide up on the screen and it's for sighted people that can't listen to you to like basically get something out of your presentation. And <laughs> yeah, that, really is the, do that. that really is the truth. Like I'm not like I'm trying to be nice, but at the same time, it really is real. Uh, and so the, um, the thing for me was when I was learning that, I was very nervous that I was going to mess up or not have something aligned. And with companies like Be My Eyes that, that Dave mentioned earlier, or Ira, um, you can you can have somebody kind of look over and just make sure if, if because sometimes like, yes, the screen reader does report formatting uh, to me. Uh, and I can kind of understand like where things are relative to the screen, but I don't know if a picture is overlap overlapsing text. You know, that's something I just can't tell. And so that's where I kind of turn to these other aids and it's 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 been useful but I mean the point is like I taught myself PowerPoint and I I, I want to say like facing that fear for me was was a, a big one because it was it helped me do my job and helped me become a better presenter because now I even though I just made fun of PowerPoint and, and slides uh I actually laid out this document in a PowerPoint type of thing like I put bullet points I didn't I don't have two pictures in here but I <laughs> no, <laughs> but, it, but it has helped me it works, it, instead of being like completely off the top of my head I I do have a rhythm to this uh presentation so but thank you all so much yeah
Thank you. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yes. So I'm going to stand. Okay, is there okay. a one question for you? Because I, I am going to do a quick demo. Of, uh, yeah. Is there yeah. an outlet up here? Oh, no, we're just fine. Hi, okay. Sandra. Okay. Let me do my wiping my down. Bye, Mike. I'm going to show you. Behind me. Okay. What'd you say that? My mic is on the right hand side. It. Thank you. Yeah. Of the I got it. Nice. What is it? Okay. Oh, there's a oh well, wasn't that awesome? I I learned that I probably have a lot more fears to overcome when it comes to technology. I think my biggest fear is messing it up. And um, right now, if Lonnie, can you make your way up here again with another door prize for the students? I hear him. And while Lonnie is making his way, I know we have been sitting for a long time. So if you can do it quietly, you kind of stretch, get that blood circulating. Dave would be proud. Um, <laughs> so go ahead and kind of do that while Lonnie and Laura, you can be making your way up for the next in-person door price. Okay, Lonnie. All right, we have the second door prize for the KSB students. The name drawn is Jaden Robinson. Congratulations. Laura up here. Yeah, I'm here. Hi. I'm here. That's good. All right. Okay, so um, just to clarify, um, what what we're gonna do, even for the, the these particular in person door prizes, you are going to be emailed the gift card, the ten dollar Amazon gift card. So I just need to make sure that. Um, Kate, I need to make sure that I have your correct email address. And then for the person who gets this door prize, I need to make sure that I have your correct email address. But anyway, the winner this time is Scott Spaulding. Oh, wow. Well, so there we go. All right. All right. Thank you, Laura. Okay. <laughs> All right, trying to get this a little straight. Okay, more prizes. That's one of my favorite words aside from free. Oh, wait, they are. So that's right up there. Okay, we, Joe, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, we are going to hear from Joe Hodge again from um, the American Printing House, um, and he is going to talk with us about high solutions. I'm not positive what all that it will entail. However, I think, oh, there's all kinds of stuff up here with me. <laughs> oh, I've got to stop touching. Um, but I... <laughs> I'm a little inquisitive when it comes to technology. So I have a feeling we're going to get some more um, wonderful information. <laughs> I'm trying not to hurt Sandra. All right. Let's set this up here. Sorry. Sorry to the Zoom people there. Okay. Get off of that. Okay, uh, this is gonna start up here. I got a piece of equipment I'm gonna talk about for the first time. But I wanted to get started set up here. Okay, so I'm Joe Hodge from APH. Put on my other hat here. Um, and I got a few products to talk about today. Two of which you heard about last year, but there's been a few changes and some exciting stuff that's gone on that I'll demonstrate. Um, so I have three products. I have the Mantis, the which is a 40 cell brother split. I'll get into what they are in a second. The chameleon, and then the loud thing that you hear is poly. <laughs> I'm gonna turn that down. Okay. Um, so they all have different functions and and uh serve a sort of a different uh population of people, but I'm excited to talk about each one and I will uh, start with the chameleon. So it's the smallest thing I have. Uh it's a 20 20 cell braille display. 
Uh, and one of the really cool features that we added recently is text to speech. So this is, I'm going to kind of start, I'm going to give you a view of what the command looks like. Uh, Cause even though we're in person, thank goodness. Uh, most of you can't see and sorry, Polly is still booting up and being loud. Um, all right. So on the top, we have a Perkins style keyboard. Uh, we have cursor routing keys, and then we have 20 refreshable braille cells. On the left hand side of the device, we have a USB a port, which is for um, connecting like a flash drive to put files onto it or to save files onto it. We have a power button and we have a USB C port, which is meant for charging or connecting to the computer. Uh, on the back, we have an SD card slot. And on the right hand side, we have a headphone jack and volume keys. Um, so with this, uh, the really great thing is that it's very small, very portable. I can uh, now women's jeans are a little different. So, um, but I can actually get this in the pocket of my jeans, uh, which is really nice. I've actually thought it was my phone and misplaced it. Uh, so the Mantis, I'm going to kind of describe that real quick because the software is the same. So the Mantis is a QWERTY style key device. So it's going to be like your computer keyboard. Uh, and it has 40 cells. So we have a power button on the left-hand side. We have the same USB-A for transferring files. And we have a USB-C. On the back is the same SD card slot. The only difference is on the right, there's no volume keys because this does not have a headphone jack on it. So with the operating system itself, um, you can actually do things. So, so when you boot in, uh, you're on the editor. And just kind of moving through the main menu, we have an editor, we have a braille editor, which I love because for the first time on a device, I can type in whatever braille language I want. So if I want to do a mixture of UEB or the old eBay, I can do that. Um, we have a terminal, which is where you connect to different screen readers. So each device here can connect to five Bluetooth devices and one USB-C. We have a library where you can read books from Bookshare or news articles from NFB Newsline. We have a file manager, which is where you can kind of delete files as sort of your root computer file system. We have a four basic calculator, so you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And then we have online services. So this is where you can configure all of your, uh, your Bookshare account, your NFB Newsline, what, what papers you wanna read or what books you wanna download. So th these actually do have built-in Wi-Fi which is actually really nice. And um, the built-in Wi-Fi primarily is for downloading books or it's for updating the software of the device. Real quick, one of the, the, the fun things I love about these devices on the software side is when you're doing the update, it actually has a progress bar that moves across the Braille display. It's just one of those nice touches I like because it, it kind of reminds me of like an hourglass uh, when side of people tell me that they can see things are happening on the computer you can actually feel things progressing on the Braille display. So one of the things I was telling you about, the major difference between the Chameleon and Mantis outside the Braille display and the, the keyboards themselves is that the Chameleon has now text-to-speech. So I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna turn it up here. Let's see if I can get it to, to the mic. The speaker is not great, but you can plug in uh, headphones. So let me move this up here. What? Library, file manager. So you, you can kind of hear the text to speech there. And this is as slow as it gets here. Calculator. So it says calculator. Date and time. So what I like about this, one of the, the reason I want to talk about this is you have two voices. You have a female and a male voice that you can choose from. Uh, and one of the biggest features that I like is let's say you're teaching someone Braille for the first time, you can go to the editor and you can write a word in. So I can write, uh, I'll, I'll actually demo it here. So I'm going to go to editor and just create a file. And I'm just going to say hi. And then now if I, if I touch the cursor router key above the word hi, it repeats it. 
So as you're teaching Braille, that's like a really cool tool that you could use. Like say you're learning uh, uncontracted versus contracted Braille. So as you're learning that contracted Braille, you could, if you got to a sign you didn't know, you could just tap that cursor router key and it's gonna say the word that's under it, which I think is actually pretty useful. Um, you can also read in, with speech books or you could transfer to Braille. So whichever you're most comfortable with, it gives you uh, options. And for a note taker with Braille, at this price point. Uh, they just upped the price because of some COVID issues. I think the chameleon now, I believe, I've been out of uh, this department for about two months from my surgery. But last time I looked, it was 16.95. Forgive me if that's off or on a little bit for the chameleon. Um, but it <clears throat> it's, a, it's a great price as a, someone who's grown up with these devices to get braille and speech and something under $2,000 is, is pretty impressive. Um, and, and probably unheard of until this device. Um, I, cause the, yeah, we had the braille trail that was under a th uh, around a thousand, but it didn't have speech. So, um, so that's a little bit about the chameleon and the mantis, uh, before I switch, does anybody have any questions on these two devices? One other quick thing I can mention is switching devices. So I use this to switch from my iPhone to uh, my PC, for example, all the time. It's very seamless. Uh, in fact, one of the really cool things we did, is we actually have added a key command to do so. Uh, so you can go in between multiple devices now easier. Um, and I think just, I don't know, the, the ability to kind of move from your iPhone to to a Mac or to a Windows PC is, is, is pretty flawless. So I can I could be doing a Google Sheets thing or a Microsoft thing and then move over to my iPhone and send Danielle a message or or whoever. And then and then that, that goes and then I back to my work. And it's just, it's been so uh, great for my productivity. Um, all right, so the new device I brought this year is called Poly. It's developed by a company named Thinkerbell Labs out of India. We've been working with them. The reason I brought it, it's not necessarily geared to many folks probably in this room. It's geared for kids who are learning Braille. But the exciting thing about this device um, is it's a great tutor, but it's also got the first ever true electronic slate and stylus. So I have a, so on, I'm gonna de describe the device to you. Uh, I got my stylus in my pocket. That way I don't poke myself. Okay. Uh, so on the device, on the top left, and, and you all are welcome to come up maybe after, uh, I'll, I'll stick around for a little bit to if you want to feel it or something. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have what's called jumbo braille. So we have two quote-unquote jumbo braille cells. And then on the right is a small braille display. It's a six-cell braille display. And then we have the traditional Perkins keyboard. And then going below the like dot four and dot one key is the spot where you're gonna feel the, uh, where the slate and stylus would be working. So it's, it's got kind of like the holes for the, um, for the stylus part. And then, and that's a one, two, three, four, five. That's also a six cell. And then below that is the dot seven space and dot eight keys. On the left-hand side of the device, we have two USB-A's for hooking up a flash drive. That really doesn't work at this point. I'm not exactly sure what their vision is with that, uh, but it's there. <laughs> um, and then there's possibly hooking up an external keyboard maybe down the road. I'm not sure. There's an Ethernet jack. And then there is a power but, uh, switch. And there's also a repeat button. So you hold it and it will repeat whatever, you, whatever it said last. On the right hand side is a volume key and then a headphone jack. And you probably will want a headphone jack at some point. Uh, so it'd be, be nice to uh, not disturb anyone else. Um, the reason I brought this though, for a few reasons is not only is it the first device that has an electronic slate and stylus device, but we are also talking about building an adult version down the road. Um, we we wanna get this one out first, but um, I imagine like a lot of people who lose their sight later in life would love a device like this. And I think bring it here could show the potential of that and just getting feedback. I think as, as this thing comes out, um, it's going to be sold for around a thousand dollars. Um, there are, um, <laughs> so many lessons on this. You, you basically start with uh, uncontracted braille. You work your way through 
all the letters, all of the uh, dot combinations. Then you learn contracted Braille and you learn all the short forms. There are so many lessons that I have a coworker who started going through them in August and she's still working on them today, has not gotten through all of them. And, and that's all she does. <laughs> so that gives you an idea of how long and how extensive this thing is as far as teaching the Braille code, it, 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 it has it all. Um, so I'm gonna kind of let you hear it and kind of go through a little bit. There's also uh, games. So there's what's called whack -a braille which is sort of like whack-a-mole. Uh, so you, you, on the Braille jumbo dots, you, it'll say um, uh, press dot six or something like that. And you have to push dot six down um, and you have to do it quickly and time runs out, you get like 30 seconds uh, to do it and you, you try to get the best score. One of the cool things is because of the ethernet port, we're actually going to try to develop a game system for kids around the nation to play each other. So it'll kind of entice learning Braille and sort of gamifying it a little bit, which I mean, all kids like to do these days. I mean, they have things like the leapfrog that that are out for sighted kids that, you know, gamify learning. And as a blind person, we just don't have that out there until this device really. Um, so I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Yes, a little loud. Let's learn about the dot five initial letter contraction for where. Let's explore how where can be used in a sentence. So you have this. Where? I'm going to skip this real quick because this is where I left off uh, playing with it. But I want to show you just briefly like one of the English games here uh, of how it kind of worked. So we have English gray Braille to contracted Braille. So if I if I select that. Reading and typing. So we have reading and typing. And then there's also reading and writing, which is where the slate and styles comes into play. Um, but I'm going to press space bar. Alphabetic word signs. Strong contractions. So I'm going to press, I'm going to uh, choose strong contractions. Strong contraction for and. So I'm going to do that. Strong contraction for and. Introduction to dot combination. So we don't need an introduction because we're smarter than that. Strong contraction for and. Reading game. So here's a read Find the odd one out. So here's a reading. Game. I just wanted to explain what this is. Now let's play a game. In this game, you need to find the odd one out. On the standard Braille display, every cell is strong contraction for and, except for one cell. Find the cell that is different and is not strong contraction for and. For example, if the cell number four is different, you will type key number four to answer. So, bas so basically, it's going to be a game and it would, it would have, it's going to pop up. I'm going to turn you down. Okay. Uh, it's going to pop up a cell. So for example, it might have dot three raised or, or it might be a Y because it sometimes likes to trick you. So it might it would have the Y, which is backwards from the end, right? So, so it would have the Y on one cell and then the rest of them be and. And it, it kind of flip-flops. So, so there's, there's different games. You can play like this one or you can play, um, uh, you could play which one, it, where is and hiding? So that would be more what I just described. But um, I'm going to show you a little bit real quick. We're going to, we're going to do one of the, I'm going to do the slate and stylus to show you how bad I was. I, I never learned the slate and stylus growing up. Uh, so I've been learning with Polly <laughs> and it is, has been an adventure. Uh, so we're going to do games. English Braille grade one. Let's see. Whack, whack of introduction setting. Go back to games here. Game. There we go. Letter race. Is it letter race anymore? Or is writing. it? Yeah, writing. Okay. All right. Let's play letter race. Turn it up there. In this game, whenever you hear the sound, a new letter appears on the standard Braille display. If you write the letter, it is removed from the Braille display and you score one point. 
but new letters keep appearing quickly. And when the entire standard Braille display is filled with letters, your game is over. So the <laughs> faster you read and write, the higher you score. You have to write in cell one, and whenever you finish writing, remember to press the space bar to submit your answer. Press space Pressure's bar on. to start the game. Ready, so, steady, go! So what it does when it, once it pops up, it actually wrote an X. So I'm going to slowly put an X in here. All right. <laughs> I didn't fail the demo. <laughs> so then it put an H in here. I'm going to let it go. Uh, so, so you hear that you can hear the, the, the ticking of the clock and it's going to ding and it'll pop another Braille cell up here. It's kind of slow at first, is it? Maybe one's going to go. So we'll. Okay, there we go. Popped up another one up. So now we have a, a H and a V. So basically, the idea is here that you don't want to let the, the cells fill up, but you get around 30 seconds, uh, which embarrassingly, I got like six once, uh, I think my first time, uh, but I've progressed um, since. So, Welcome to the main menu. Um, but it's, it's really cool. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, it's really cool to kind of see this technology uh, come to fruition because um, I think it moves the Slate and Stylus back into, you know, a lot of folks were you know, a lot of teachers, um, so, you know, kind of maybe not be teaching it um, as much these days. So I think it brings it back into focus on a, on a mainstream device like this. Um, so I, uh, I, I've definitely learned a lot and, and actually have purchased a Slate and Stylus myself. And the cool thing is, is you can use any stylus you want. So it's not like proprietary or, you know, if a kid loses it or if you lose it, uh, you can actually uh, use any stylus you want on this thing. Um, so any questions about Poly? Uh, so the release date, we are still, uh, yours truly is still testing. <laughs> uh, there has not been a release date announced yet. Uh, we are, we're just, we're working on all, all the issues that we find, so. Hey, Danielle. That's correct. Okay. And you literally write right to left. Yeah. And and the cool thing is when you when you're using the slate and stylus, and this is actually really handy for me because you know, uh, I guess because I didn't learn it as a kid, like the whole concept of a slate and stylus, it was weird at first because you're writing backwards, or, and then you flip over the sheet to read what you wrote. On this, as you're writing, you can feel the dots pop up on that small braille display. So you can kind of tell like, oh, I went, I went the wrong way <laughs> or, or I messed up. So as you're, as you're actually writing, it's popping up the, the dot that you pushed on the braille cell, on the small braille display itself. So you can kind of check yourself, which is actually really helpful for, for me because I, I'm pretty ignorant and I don't have a real teacher teaching me this. So it was actually really helpful guiding me along the way. Uh, one thing about that, just for, for teachers uh, that might be in the room, is you can actually, uh, so let's say a student is struggling with a certain amount of contraction. So like when I was growing up, I struggled with the with and the of. And you could literally set uh, lessons that only deal with those two contractions for your, your kid to, to uh, that your kiddo to actually learn. So you're in control of what they're actually able to get to. So if you don't want them to have access to games, you can remove that from the device. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, which is, uh, I think I mentioned it to Danielle when I said you write like right to left, uh, because yeah, it's that that's a better way to look at it. But I, it, it's still a hard concept for me. Like, uh, it really is like facing my fears. That honestly is one of my was one of my fears. And, and, and here's where the slate and stylus, I think, you know, not knowing it hurt me at, at APH is we would sign get well cards or or grievance cards for folks. And folks would use, uh, coworkers of mine would use the Slate and Stylus and I would have no idea how to use it. And now I do, uh, thanks to Polly. So it's, uh, 
it, it really, it really has actually added some value to my life where I can actually feel like I don't have to have someone just, you know, scribble my, or I can, I, I don't have to just scribble my name and they go, who's that? <laughs> so Yeah, so we've actually, this has gone out to uh, five different school for the blinds uh, uh, for field testing. Uh, so yeah, that, that for anything at APH to be on quota, we actually have to send it out in the field to be tested. Any other, any other questions? Wow, I either board everybody again or, you know. Um, so yeah, this is Polly. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it plugged in in case anybody wants to come feel it, see it after we're done. Uh, just because this is the first time uh, people really have been able to get their hands on, on the device. Um, we've had it at two other, we had it at the NFB convention and we had it at um, AER, which is a national education uh, conference. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to, for you guys to see it. Uh, also the Mantis and Chameleon, if you, we've had it out for a, a, about two years, both devices, but because of COVID, you know, again, not a lot of people have actually been able to touch them and see what they think. So if you, if you want to feel one or want to get your hands on one, just come see me afterwards. All right. Thank you all. That was, that was wonderful. There's definitely a chameleon in my future. I think that's the one with the speech. And that's definitely in my future. Although I'm sorry, but those games were okay. And as an adult, I, I wouldn't mind playing. My slate and stylus skills are a little bit slow. So wouldn't probably hurt me in the least. Oh, I'm still touching. That's a chameleon. You're going to have your chameleon. This is a sample, right? So me to take with me. Here you go. Um, so that was awesome. Now, I, I feel I've been a little remiss in that I have not given the appropriate recognition to some individuals who are in the room with us this morning. So I'm going to take that opportunity and introduce them to you now so that you know they're in here. We have with us... You heard her speak a little earlier. I think you've actually heard them both and you're probably thinking, who are they? Well, we have Jane Seif. Jane, you over there? Hi, Jane. Jane, for those of you who may not know, Jane is president of NFBKY. And because COVID came, this is the first in-person convention um, where Jane has been able to show off her her wonderful skill. So we're so happy that Jane is in the room with us. We also have another person who has marvelous skills. And a lot of us don't know about those because we maybe haven't been to national convention, but we have in the room with us, our national representative. And this year we are honored to have Pam Allen. Pam, are you still in here? Hi. Um, so let's give her a round of applause. And I'm certain that we will be hearing from her tomorrow as she gives us greetings from other places. Now, Laura and, oh, I guess it's just Laura going to make her way up here since, oh, you're here. You're so close. Well, that's awesome. I didn't get taken off guard, which is a good thing. There you go. Uh, little okay. damn. Sorry. All right. Let me open up my my little container here and find a name. And I'm. This is for another ten dollar gift card. I'm assuming. And this is Karen May. Karen, are you here? I think she is. All right. There we go. All right. And Joe, I want to see the poly. Uh, that is the coolest thing. I would have loved that as a TBI. And you didn't have me as a TBI. You would have learned the slate before the Braille writer. <laughs> I 
Okay, we are running a little bit ahead of time. You know, I'm gonna, so since we are, I'm gonna introduce someone else. Someone else in the room is Mr. Roland Allen and he is Pam's husband. Roland and I have a specific memory that he probably doesn't remember, but I'm gonna refresh his memory later on, not in front of you all because it's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> Oh, it's a, it, I'm, no, I'm not going to say it's good, but it, it, he will always be, I will never, ever forget him. We'll just go with that. And he probably won't remember till I tell him. He'll go, that's you? And yeah, yeah, definitely me. <laughs> so now they're going to wait and think, what is that woman going to say? So now we are going to introduce some folks you have been hearing. You've heard Laura give away door prizes. I'm being told to hold on. Why am I holding? Oh. Oh, knocked it down. Speaker throws it on the in the middle. <laughs> Is she coming on my right or my left? Over here. Yeah, here I am. Here I am. Hi. It's a little bit damp, but it's you know, it's okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, I just want to say how excited Roland and I are to be with everybody. I know it's always so in uplifting to come together in person. So I'm really excited to be here and we have learned a great deal this morning. So thank you for all the great information. We're so excited to be with everybody in person and virtually. And I know that great things are happening in Kentucky. So I'm thrilled to be here and learn from all of you and share with you. So happy convention and thank you so much for the warm welcome. <laughs> Are y'all ready now? Oh, Laura. Okay. Well, now I guess I will introduce them. Now you have heard Laura give away door prizes and you have probably heard a voice who has not been recognized um, as of yet, but the other voice you have heard, male, and who you will be hearing from is Mr. Todd Stevens. He is our esteemed president of the Technology Assistance Division. Um, and he and Laura, his wife, will be giving a presentation on a service that all of us probably in the room are familiar with. And maybe some of you are not, but that service is an FB Newsline. And they're going to tell us all about it, how to get it, how you can access it, and what it can do to help you to live the lives that you choose to live. Todd, Laura. Okay, just making sure. Okay, um, here I am. Sorry about that. I was actually going out to get the actual physical door prizes that I had because I think that's important. Everybody wants door prizes. They want stuff. So, so anyway, I apologize for the delay. Um, Todd and I are here to talk about NFB Newsline, and we're both just kind of going to kind of jump in and do this together. Um, NFB Newsline is a service um, that is available. Um, it's a project of the National Federation of the Blind that was started in um, 1995, so it's been around for a long time. Um, it started out 
as a way for blind people to access reading newspapers over the telephone. And over the years, it has evolved into a service that you can you can still use your touch tone phone to read the newspapers. Um, but there are also some other ways that you can access it. Uh, one way um, that I actually really like is using the iOS app on my iPhone. Um, you can also access it online um, on the internet um, and through the Alexa smart speaker. Um, unfortunately, there are none of those in the room or they'd have been talking to us right now because um, I said the word. But anyway, um, so those are ways that you can access it. And in addition to uh, local newspapers, the state of Kentucky currently has uh, 10 publications across the state that are available on Newsline, but there are also national and international publications that are available, including newspapers and uh, magazines. Um, and kind of the neat thing about the magazines is a lot of these magazines are actually magazines that have paid paid subscriptions. Have I said prescriptions? I don't know. I must be thinking about medication or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, um, so it's kind of neat because if you qualify with a print disability, you can have access to you know to things that you know people who are sighted are going to have to pay for. So I kind of get a little plug in for that. Um, but there are actually over 500 publications. And um, we in Kentucky are, um, you know, like Todd and I are working on the project in Kentucky. And we want all of you to be involved in helping us reach out and get new subscribers. Um, and it's actually not just for people who are blind. And I think I think this is, you know, where we can kind of reach out. People who have any type of print disability are eligible, you know, people who have a learning disability, a reading disability. Um, so it people just, who, who can uh, understand uh, what is being <laughs> spoken, uh, but they, they just have trouble reading. They can comprehend just fine, but they have trouble reading. So Newsline would be a service uh, that might be available or, or uh, would be a service that uh, could benefit you, as well as people who have fine motor skill impairment. So uh, blind, deaf, blind, fine motor skill impairment, um, and, cog and certain cognitive impairments. Um, there are, we have, we are approaching 2,300 subscribers here in Kentucky, uh, and there are over 138,000 people in this state that are eligible for Newsline. So that's 4.1%. So we have a lot of work to do. Uh, and we are calling on you to help us to spread the word and, and get people signed up and, and using a service that can promote independence. And the service is absolutely free to people who are print impaired. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right. And um... One thing that we didn't mention, as a part of the iOS app, um, there's a couple of other features that, that come in really handy, not just being able to, to read the newspapers, the magazines, you know, whatever publications that you're interested in. Um, there's also a KNFB Reader is a part of that app. And what that allows you to do is use the camera on your iPhone, to actually read text, you can you can use that, and you know even if you need to read your mail, if you're you know to see you know what kind of mail you've gotten today, there's nobody sighted around to tell you what it is. Um, you can use it to, to for that. You can use it to um, there's a GPS part of it, um, so you can open it up even if you're in a car traveling. You can open it up and it'll tell you your location. Your you know the, through GPS. Um, which that comes comes in kind of handy if you're going somewhere you're trying to figure out exactly where you are you know on the highway riding in a car or on a bus you could you know get your location um, and there are also weather alerts um, which which it's like really you know you can open up your weather app on your phone and you get a basic outline of the weather but if you use the weather alerts part of and the NFB Newsline app, it's much more detailed, gives you much more information. And that could be really handy, you know, if there's a storm, if, you know, if it's, 
you know, potentially, um, you know, hazardous weather conditions, then you might want more information than, you know, what's the temperature going to be today. Um, so those are some ways that, that the app, you, you can download the app, you have to have your codes. Once um, Todd and I, you know, verify your disability, we get you subscribed to the service and then we provide access codes um, that you use either to set up your account on the touch tone phone on your smart speaker or or through the app and it's actually pretty seamless and you know i'm, I'm just now going to be kind of taking over doing more work for um nfb newsline um, but todd's always on top of if he gets information about a new subscriber he's always on top of getting their codes back to them so they can get uh set up and going you know on the you know, with whichever mode of access that they choose, you know, and you don't have to choose one, you can use, you know, all of the modes of access. Um, another thing, you know, me as a TBI, I actually just retired this past year, um, but there is actually a, a kid's corner on Newsline. So those are publications that are, you know, would be of interest to, you know, to children um, and adolescents. And I just, I, I love that feature as a teacher. Um, because you know it just you know gives our uh, blind and visually impaired kids access to to things that their side of peers would have access to um is there any questions is there okay first of all let me ask this is there anybody in the room who needs to be subscribed to newsline because we are ready to to you know take information um i know there are some um book rehab people here today um we would like for you to help us share this with with your um your clients and uh, one thing we didn't mention and this is kind of a push you know we're wanting to get a, as many people subscribed as we can and we are kind of doing a promotion is that the right word that's right so um anybody who submits a name you know helps us get a new subscriber to newsline that individual's name is going to be put in to a drawing and tomorrow night at our um, nfb of kentucky banquet all of those names are going to be put in a pot every time you get a new subscriber your name goes in and the name that's drawn is going to win a 100 <laughs> visa gift card and we're going to continue that promotion because we're wanting to get you know as many people subscribe so you know we need um you know members of our organization you know all of our friends whoever to help us you know reach out and find all the people who are eligible you know would qualify for the for nfb newsline in addition to getting new subscribers we also want to make sure that those who have the service are using it so that's <laughs> also very important if you're not using it uh we urge you to use it um, as Laura had mentioned, there are several magazines that are paid subscriptions that are on the service that are free to people with uh, print disabilities like us, but there are also uh, paid uh, newspapers as well, like the Wall Street Journal. And right. I, I don't know uh, how many uh, young college age uh, individuals we have out there, but I know when I went to college many years ago, uh, I had to subscribe to the Wall Street Journal, and it was a paid subscription. This was in the 1980s, uh, and I, it, you know, I, there's no telling how much it is today. Unfortunately, I had to pay for it because I wasn't blind then. But uh, that publication is available, and it's absolutely free uh, for for those who qualify under print impairment. Um, it is not available. We, we get that question a lot and um, it is not available. It's just on the iOS platform. And I believe from what I understand that has to do with the fact that the Android is more like open source. And I guess it's difficult because, um, you know, technically uh, Newsline is a service and is available to us under um, the copyright, um, I can't think of the right word, basically, um, where we have a print disability, we have access to copyrighted information because, because of our disability. So, so since that's more open source, it's more difficult for them to, to turn that into, um, 
you know, so that it would be secure, I guess. I'm, that's the best way I can answer yeah, that. It's just an easier way for us to yeah. monitor just on, on that platform, the Apple platform is a lot more secure. Um, and I mean, there are some restrictions to it. We, we cannot uh, provide <laughs> forward articles to our friends. Um, right, yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's one thing we didn't, that I didn't mention. Um, if you are, you know, whether you're accessing it on your, your iOS app, on the, the Alexa, or on the telephone, um, if your email address is set up within your Newsline profile, if there's an article that you wanted, that you read, and you're like, oh, I want to go back to that and read that later, um, there's a button at the end where you can forward that to your email and it'll come to your inbox. Um, so, but, but that, like, once you have that email, that's for you. You cannot send that to yourself and forward that to anybody because that's a violation of like the copyright issues. And if, you know, if people are doing that, then they would be removed from the service. So that's, that's something that's real important to remember. And, and also for like the newspapers and the magazines, the way that it works is you don't have access to everything. You have the, the current issue of a newspaper, the previous day's issue, and then like there is like a major issue, like like if the Sunday paper in that particular publication um, is a more substantial publication, then you would have access to that. And then I think the same thing with the magazine, the current issue and the previous issue. So it's not like you can go back and read a publication from 10 years ago it's just the current information which i mean you know if you're getting a newspaper then that's you know typically what you would have unless you've got piles of newspapers in your basement or something so and you can always save an article or even the entire subscription uh, <coughs> so you can just send that to your inbox and you'll be able to keep that uh, indefinitely why don't you tell them about your favorite feature my favorite feature yeah Oh, I don't. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Sorry. I was, anyway, <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot. Um, another feature of the app, and I guess it, well, it's online as well. Uh -huh. Um, you can um, read TV listings. So basically, you you put in where you get your TV if you get it. Um, antenna, cable, uh, satellite, you know, whatever, wherever you receive your television service from you set it in your profile and then you can get tv listings for you know for your area so so that's pretty cool the other feature that's pretty cool is the job listings um we've got career builder and usa got uh usa jobs.gov uh and the great thing about newsline is you don't have to worry about all of those unwanted <laughs> ads and pop-ups because you're only getting text it's always been that way and it will always be that way so it makes it so much easier to navigate. We um, use some different, you know, online news services and iOS and, you know, you're reading an article and then you get a daggone ad or you get a pop-up and then you can't find the rest of the article and you're just like, oh, I really wanted to read that, but where is it? So, so that's the cool thing about Newsline is you don't get all that junk that you don't want. Um, Are there any questions from anyone? Right, and that actually, Lonnie, thank you for bringing that up. That is something we did not mention. Um, once you are signed up for Newsline, it is available through, um, um, you know, Joe talked about the Chameleon and the Mantis. Um, you can set those devices up with your Newsline profile and your news would automatically, and, and the e-reader, like Lonnie says, from the uh, Talking Book Library, those, your, whatever newspapers you want to read can automatically be downloaded to that device in the morning. So if you um, have your device, you know, you've got to commute to work, you want to read your um, favorite newspaper on your way to work, it will automatically be sent to your device. So you you know you just set that up in your profile. So thank you, Lonnie, for that because I oh, thank you. yeah sometimes when you're doing these presentations you need somebody to jog your memory. So I appreciate that. Anybody anybody else have anything that they want to comment on or 
uh, have any questions? That's true, Danielle. Thank you for that. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Danielle made the comment that if you have an Android phone, you can use the online um, look the online website, and you can access Newsline that way using the online website. I, there's just not an app on Android that would support Newsline. Yeah, so. That, so uh, URL is pretty easy. It's nfbnewslineonline.org. So we would urge anybody here who um, is not already registered for Newsline to, to see us. Um, and those of you who are registered or um, those of you in you know, Invoke Rehab, just if you can get, get people's names to us, we can get them registered and um, we can assist them in learning how to use the service. So, any other questions? Hey, Lily, it's Joe. Yes, uh, Joe. Quick comment, quick comment, really, is one thing I really like about the MP that some people, some people may not know about is the international news. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, like with the Western War uh, going on with the brain, I would go read stuff from, there's actually a Western uh, news. Uh, it was kind of fascinating to read. Absolutely, and and we should have mentioned that, Joe. Um, there are several international newspapers: the London Telegraph, the Jerusalem Post, the New Zealand Herald. Uh, I God. did I say London Telegraph? Yeah, I, it's I, I, there's several. I apologize, I can't rattle them off. Um, but you're right. I mean, that is a really cool thing because. You know, I think we here in our country have a certain perspective, and it's so interesting to get the perspectives from other people, especially like you said, the Russian you know, they're a lot closer to it. So you're gonna get get a different perspective. And 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 I think that um I think the neat thing about Newsline is, you know, as blind people, you know, we haven't had, you know, in the past, haven't had a lot of access to the information that people who are sighted have have had access to. So Newsline opens those doors up to give us more access, you know, like Joe said, to to other perspectives that, you know, that are outside of our, our perspectives. So. We also have the ability to see what's happening in other states, you know, across the country. So, you know, how how easy is it for you to grab newspapers from all of these different states and countries and uh, navigate through them? Uh, within a matter of minutes, it's just not possible. So it is with Newsline now. Any other questions or comments? Well, if you are not signed up uh, and you have a print impairment, please see either me or Laura and we'll be happy to get you signed up. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Well, hasn't this been an awesome symposium? So many things we have learned, so many things we can take advantage of. I probably shouldn't have unscrewed that. Okay, um, let's see. Joe, say your name. Okay, Joe is in the front of the room, and if you're facing the podium where I am standing, he would be on my left, so he is on your right. So he's to the right of this podium. Todd, where are you? Okay, Todd is on my right, your left. So if you need to see what Joe has to offer, you can see him at the front of the room. If you would like to see what Todd has to offer and sign up for Newsline, please see him. Now, if you can do that as quietly as possible, because Laura 
I think you're beside me. Yes. Oh, good. Uh, Laura is up here, and she is going to call for some more door prizes. So once again, I definitely want to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to come to the symposium. We definitely want to thank everyone for coming to our first in-person event in a long time. Yay, people, yay. Thank all of you who were not un you know, available to attend in person. Guys from KSB, wonderful to have so many of you. Thank you, KSB. Yay. They can hear us clapping. All right. So, Jane. <laughs> so, Jane Seif, our president of NFBKI, is going to come and tell us a little bit about what we have in store for tomorrow as this wonderful 75th convention continues. Hello all. Um, I think it, every year I say this, um, I, I, virtually last year, not in person, but it's always very hard as a member of the, the board of the Kentucky Affiliate to follow the symposium, because it's always so well done. So congratulations, you all. Um, if you're staying with us at the hotel, um, come down to the lobby anytime. A lot of us are hanging out. I know that some people said that they couldn't find anybody. Uh, text your friends, we are here. Um, <laughs> what I wanted to say is this afternoon um, at five, Lonnie, am I correct on that? Is it four? Okay, thank you. I couldn't remember. I don't have a piece of paper. <laughs> At four o'clock, we are doing resolutions um, and it'll be right here in this room. And this evening we are having our first in-person social for quite some time. Um, and we are going to do an 80s themed party. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my head is shaved and I will be wearing a Sinead O'Connor t-shirt. And it's going to be awesome. And I'm pretty sure I've heard that we might be having like Prince come visit and, and you know, some other notables of the era. Um, <laughs> tomorrow morning, we will start again at 9 a.m. You don't want to miss it. Um, thanks to the wonderful work of our past president, Kathy Jackson, we will have some very notable visitors first thing in the morning. And we will have a lot of discussion about facing your fears. And in the afternoon, you can face your fears of the business meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and tomorrow evening, don't miss uh, our banquet. Yay! Yay. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome. All right. It's Laura back again with the door prizes, which I had to go get earlier. Okay, so we have three actual prizes to give away. And then Todd, we have one gift card, right? A big gift card. Where'd he go? I lost him. Okay. All right. The first door prize is a portable digital recorder and it goes to Mary Jo Hackworth. All right, the next one is some wireless earbuds and they go to Don Perky. Last one is a Bluetooth speaker. And it goes to Karen Carter. Oh, Karen. All right. Okay, and I've got them up here. If you guys want to come up here um, after I finish. And the last door prize, which will be emailed as well. And it is a $25 Visa gift card. And it is going to go to Joe Hodge. All right. All right, so 
Hope you guys can make it tonight to our social. We are going to have a good time. All right, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for attending. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at our upcoming activities. And Todd, do you have anything else? Yeah, we have our Tad business meeting. Oh, we do. We do have our Tad business meeting where we will conduct Tad business. So we, we are going to uh, break right now, but uh, that will be the next session at 1245. So, All right. Feel free to see Joe or Todd if you wish to look at equipment or sign up for Newsline.